Hello everyone. Welcome to the SCP stream. Ah. I slept. I didn't feel like I slept enough, but I slept. And I've had coffee, and I still don't feel like it's enough. So yay. Oh god, I also... I started... <laughs> I've downloaded it ages ago, but I actually started playing Toho Last World. And I... I got past the intro battle, and I was like, Hey, here's all the things that you start with. I was like, great, I don't know what any of them are. So, yeah. Uh, I'm completely lost on that game completely. Uh, the one, the one that I do know is that I do have, I can't remember her name, but one of the five stars that I have is the main character from, um, Embodiment of Scarlet Devil. So, yeah. That is where my, that is the limit of my knowledge of how well I'm doing in Toho. Ah. <laughs> uh. But yeah, we're here with the SCP stream rather than Massacres Monday because it was going to be this or I would probably lose my kneecaps to Lydia for getting rid of RPG Thursday. Um, as far as I know, there's no other um, changes to the schedule for the rest of the week. Um, no planned collabs, I don't think, unless Jace decides to do um, Mario Kart on Friday, which will be fun. Uh, or, you know, obviously, unless Jace decides to, um, well, not decides to, Jace's um, uh, drunk stream gets done, and then that happens, whenever that does. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the only thing I've got, and also, as you can probably tell, it's fucking hot, and it's real fucking bright. I hate it. Uh, yeah. So let's let's dive into catching up with some chat and then starting this off. Let's just first change this because I've seen that we've had um, one put in. I did have a random one set up ready to go just in case no one had actually um, put one in, but apparently we're not going to need that. I had five zero zero five up as a random, um, but yeah, we now have. Let's see, we've got o four nine, which is cheeky beaky. I don't care what his actual name is. He's cheeky beaky to me. Uh, the, from DJ, we've got um, 5008 from Pokey. And then we have 1862 from E by the medium of um, Jack's recommendations. Awesome. So yeah, let's catch up on... I was about to do that because I'm so used to doing that to indicate chat. Let's go ahead and catch up on chat. There's all the way over there. But technically it's, all the way, it's over there as well. It's just, you know, if I do VOD terms, that's not going to be there. That's always going to be. Yes, that wall is also going to be there. That chat's going to... I have to point at my computer for it to look like I'm pointing at chat. That's weird. But yeah. That's there. Uh, Boy wants to go to the devil. MC is either Raymond or Marisa. Whichever one is in the red dress. Thinking about it, it might not actually be um, Boy wants to the devil. It's the one who... Comes at the beginning of Bad Apple, I think, actually. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, hello, welcome, DJ. You died laughing on Steam Final Fantasy VII Remake integrated seventy pounds. Yeah. Welcome to the welcome to the state of um, the um, games industry. It's a new game. It's a new next gen game. So they feel entitled to charge seventy pounds for it because I think that's also how much they're charging for it new on PS Five. So yeah. Welcome to that becoming the new normal. Um, hello, welcome, E. Hello, working home. I I guess it was you, E, from you saying that you're um, working from home, because otherwise, if it was Jack, then A, Jack was feeling better, and B, wouldn't say working from home. She needs to get the last... This is the term Jack gave me the airs, the other bit, yeah. Uh, your largest ticket at the ready. Hello, welcome, Pokey. Uh, it's either Raymond Marie, so it's Ray, Right, yeah, Raymu. Awesome. Awesome, yes. I have I have Raymu along with I think one or two other five stars, and I have Blue Dress Knife Lady as my fate card. It did name her, but I have forgotten her name. Um hello, welcome Nia, and thank you for your recommendation. We'll just pop that in. CP108, I don't think I've got 108 there. Nope. 108 is a new one. Uh hello, welcome Mock. Also has 69. 
slowly starting to run out of material. You're going to have to go on a long twist to restock. Oh, God. Dio. No. <laughs> no, it's not, not, not JoJo. It's not JoJo inspired. That's like... Suyaka or something like that? Or Sakaya? I don't know. Sakuya, that's the one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Sakuya is one, uh, the, my main fake card. Uh, Mock goes for random quote, gets Straw Dew from Lydia. Yep. Your PP was full of islands. Yes. My sweet froggy woggy. That was the most recent um, Final Fantasy IX one. And weirdly enough, that's already become my most... Well, no, my, my second most viewed video on my channel. As in my YouTube channel. Like, last I checked, it was at 17 views. And my most viewed one is the Shadow Man one, which is like 25 or 28 views. As long as he doesn't care about um, YouTube, I'm getting, I'm getting views. Why am I? Why? Why have I got stuff going up on Discord? It's yeah, of course it is. Ah, uh, perfect response. Right, that stuff caught up with. Let's go into SCP-049, cheeky beaky, as I will call him. Um, let's see, this is obviously this is a series one SCP, so a. He's fairly well known in the SCP lore, and B, it's one of the older format ones. Also, curiously enough, um, someone managed to get into the SCP um, database via um, a staff account and deleted the front page a few days ago. It's been recovered, but and you know the account is back in the hands of the original holder. But yeah, someone actually directly targeted the SCP database. You have your own issues with Lost World, which I've voiced in Discord before. It's fair. I mean, I went into it and I had no expectations. Like, oh, it's a turn-based battle card game sort of thing. Well, turn-based battle games. Like, oh, okay, fair. That's only from the intro one. I was like, eh, it'll, be a, it'll be a mindless game if I ever run out of things to do in Ark Knights and everything else. Which I don't think I will. Okay. Ah. Uh. Item number, SCP-049, Object Cast, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-049 is contained within a standard secure humanoid containment cell in Research Sector 02 at Site 19. 049 must be sedated before any attempts to transport it. During transport, 049 must be secured within a Class 3 humanoid restriction harness, including a locking collar and extension restraints, and monitored by no fewer than two armed guards. While 049 is generally cooperative with most Foundation personnel, outbursts or sudden changes in behaviour are to be met with elevated force. Under no circumstances should any personnel come into direct contact with 049 during these outbursts. In the event 049 becomes aggressive, the application of la lavender, L Model Feeder, has been shown to produce a calming effect on the entity. Once calmed, 049 generally becomes compliant and will return to containment with little resistance. In order to facilitate the ongoing containment of 049, the entity is to, to be provided with the corpse of a recently deceased animal, typically a bovine or other large mammal, once every two weeks for study. Corpses that become instances of 049-2 stroke are to be removed from 049's containment cell and incinerated. 049 is no longer permitted to interact with human subjects and requests for human subjects are to be denied. Temporary Containment Procedure Update, see Addendum 049.3. Per Containment Committee Order 049.S19.17.1, 049 is no longer permitted to interact directly with any members of Foundation staff, nor is it to be provided with any additional corpses to be used in its surgeries. Zeta, hello and welcome, and thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, raiders. We are reading SCP weirdness. Someone, if, if I have, I don't have any mods on here. Let's throw you a shout out. There you go. Go give Zeta some love as well. It's a wonderful Foxo Bean. Welcome, Rose, to the Dragon's Den. The spooky den. Um, let's see. Where are we? Um. This order shall persist indefinitely until such a time a consensus regarding the ongoing containment of 049 can be reached. 
pokey with that cursed quote. Description. 049 is a humanoid entity, roughly 1.9 meters in height, which bears the appearance of a medieval plague doctor. While 049 appears to be wearing the thick robes and ceramic mask indicative of the, that profession, the garments instead seem to have grown out of 049's body over time. Ew. You're a sweaty fox, an hourish of super hot VR, and I'm dead. Oh god, yeah, super hot. I, I've seen people playing super hot. Jesus Christ. I, to be fair, I've seen people um, do, playing VR, and I was like, nah, it's not for me. I'm, I'm sat here getting sweaty, and I am just sat here with the fan on, the window open. It's just that warm. Ugh. Your voice is perfect for reading this, thank you. I've, I've been told that these are very well received, hence why I keep doing them. Um, let's see, there's a footnote to attach to that one. Uh, the robes and gloves are identical to a thick hide built up on the skin, while the mask is composed of a kind of chitin growing out of the bones of the face. Ew. Cheeky Beaky is right. Ugh. Yeah, it usually isn't too bad, but games where you get schmoovin can be way more than you think. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I, um, even back to, you know, days of having the Wii, the amount of activity you had to put into that, just, no, thanks. No. Actually, looks better than you might expect. Oh, no, I've got pictures here. But still. Yeah. Um, X-rays indicate that despite this, O49 does have a humanoid skele skeletal structure beneath its outer layer. O49 is capable of speech in a variety of languages, though tends to prefer English or medieval French. Footnote of the entity claims to have originated in 15th century France, though admits that it is particularly well travelled. While O49 is generally cordial and cooperative with Foundation staff, it can become especially irritated or at times outright aggressive if it feels that it is in presence of what it calls the pestilence. Although the exact nature of this pestilence is currently unknown to Foundation researchers, it does seem to be an issue of immense concern to O49. O49 will become hostile with individuals it sees as being affected by the pestilence, often having to be restrained should it encounter such. This French explains everything. <laughs> Oh god, how I wish Q could be here as I was reading this just for that comment alone. Uh, if left unchecked, 049 will generally attempt to kill any such individual. 049 is capable of causing all bio biological functions of an organism to cease through direct skin contact. How this occurs is currently unknown, and autopsies of 049's victims have invariably been inconclusive. 049 has expressed frustration or remorse after these killings, indicating that they could they have done little to kill the pestilence, though will usually seek to then perform a crude surgery on the corpse using the implements contained within the, a black doctor's bag it carries on its person at all times. Footnote 3. The space within this bag is seemingly anonymously large, as 049 has been observed pulling objects larger than the bag itself from within it in order to operate on deceased subjects. I don't know why, but that's just projected the mental image of SCP-049 pulling a 2x4 out of um, a doctor's bag. Nurse, restrain the patient. You can't? Well, station time. 2x4 out. Crack. Patient stated. While these surgeries are not always successful, they often result in the creation of instances of SCP-049-2. 049 stroke 2 instances are reanimated corpses that have been operated on by 049. These instances do not seem to retain any of their prior memories or mental functions, having only basic motor skills and response mechanisms. While these instances are generally inactive, moving very little and in a generally ambulatory fashion, they can become extremely aggressive if provoked or if directed to by 049. 049 stroke 2 instances express active biological functions, though these are vastly different from the currently understood human physiology. Despite these alterations, 049 often remarks that the subjects have been cured. Zombies. Addendum 049.1 Discovery 
049 was discovered during the investigation of a series of unknown disappearances in the town of Montauban in southern France. During a raid on a local home, investigators found several instances of 049 stroke 2 as well as 049. While law enforcement personnel engaged the hostile um, 049 stroke 2 instances, 049 was noted as watching the engagement and taking notes in its journal. After all of the 049 stroke 2 instances were dispatched, 049 willingly entered Foundation custody. The following interview was conducted by Dr. Raymond Ham during the initial investigation. It's got a sound file. Do people want me to read the interview or do people want to listen to the sound file? I will not do both, I will do either one that is the more popular of the two. One second, I think I'll actually do a poll on that. That is really not what I wanted to do. Anyway, I'll pause up for two minutes. Oh, really? Hello, welcome. Hope you're getting med soon, so do I. You say read it, and Pokey says both at once. It is Pix and I had the voice on it, it's not as I thought it would be. But, I mean, I, I've already, de um, I've already um, determined what my voice is going to be for him, because I've read this before, on my own time. And weirdly enough, me reading this to myself, and the voice that I brought up for 049 is what inspired me to say, hey, maybe I should read these on stream. Thank you, Torian, for your contribution to the VTuber stream challenge. We've currently got, it's current, oh, currently two on each. Malky Smoothie Boise has got two boy, two boys. And Southfire has got two votes as well. You're going to make me do a flip a coin, aren't you? I can already tell you, you're going to make me um, flip a blooming coin. I guess it has been the way that the game, the, the game? I'm playing a game right now. Don't get me wrong, I usually am. It's not at the moment. This is the way the stream's going to be going, isn't it? Ow. Well, whilst those last moments are ticking down, I'm going to... The newly, well, I'm going to take stickers off of a, new, a newly acquired game. Yeah, I hope you get your home pill soon. I like sleep, but I should feel miserable. Mood, for different reasons. Until this is really good. Oh, we have another one in the, um, in the racking. One, two, three, zero... Let's have a look on my list. Been body checked by Kalia. Two three zero. I've not read oh, one two three zero. That goes in the racking then. CP one two three zero. Just got done watching Happy Sh Happy Sugar Life. Nice. Well, the polls ended in a tie, so um, I think I've got a browser source. Is it a browser source? No, it's a window capture, isn't it? An existing wheel. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so in case you can't tell, I do I do read this on... Wait. That's not the one I'm trying to get you to look at. Um... That's the one. No, that's not the one. That's the one. God, God that got so tiny. I'm watching Happy Sugar Life. That was certainly something. Well, if you enjoyed it, that's what that's what counts. Flip that coin, yes. Flip a coinable. So if we go heads, will be me, and tails will be the voice. Heads, that's me. Uh, bop. 
remove that one. I need to keep using it. And remove. Yep, remove. You felt some kind of way, that's for sure. Imagine. All right. Let's just hang on a second. Is that is the disc actually? Yes, the disc is in there. Is the disc unscratched? Yeah, pretty much. Good, good. I can go in there and be streamed at another day. Falling off that hem. Straight enough. Good God, that's, that part of the game looks really, really wonky from um, the stream view. Uh, right. You're probably all going to laugh as I, um, as I do this. But hey. The following interview it was conducted by Dr. Raymond Ham during the initial investigation. Interviewer, Dr. Raymond Ham, Site 85, Interviewee 04, SCP-049. Begin log, 049, in French. So then how shall we begin? An introduction? Dr. Ham, is that French? Can I get a translation? Ah, the King's English. No need for translation, sir. I can speak it well enough. Ah, good. My name is Dr. Raymond Hand, and I... Ah, a doctor! A like-minded individual, no doubt. Wherein is your specialty, sir? Uh, cryptobiology. Why? Ah, a medical man such as myself. Wonders abound. And here I worried that I had been adopted by common street thugs. This place, then, this is your laboratory? I had wandered, as clean as it is, and with such little trace of the pestilence here. Uh, the pestilence? What do you mean? The scourge, the great dying. Come now, you know the, uh... Uh, what do they call it? The, the, ah, no matter. The pestilence, yes. It about, it continue, hang on a second. It continue, abounds outside these walls, you know. So many have succumbed and many more will continue to until such time as a perfect cure could be developed. Fortunately, I am very close. It is my duty in life to rid the world of it, you see. The cure to end all cures. When you say the great dying, are you talking about the bubonic plague? I do not know what that is. I see. Right, well, the entities our agents can encounter at that house. They were dead when you encountered them, yes, and you reanimated them. Uh, in a manner of speaking, you see, things too simply, Doctor. Expand your horizons. Life and death, sickness and health, these are amateur terms for amateur physicians. There is only one ailment that exists in the world of men, and that is the pestilence, and nothing else. Make no mistake, they were very ill, all of them. You think you cured those people? Indeed, my cure is most effective. The things we recovered were not human. Yes, well, it is not a perfect cure, but that will come with time and further experimentation. I have spent a lifetime developing my methods, Dr. Ham, and will spend a lifetime more if necessary. Now, we have wasted too much time. There is work to do. I require a laboratory of my own, where, one where I can continue my research unimpeded. And assistance, of course, though I can provide those on my own in time. <laughs> I don't think our organization will be willing to. Nonsense! We are all men of science. Fetch your coat and show me to my quarters, Doctor. Our work begins now! End log. Oh, another one um, from Nia. Thank you very much. And it's SCP-049 stroke gel. God, we got, we got a J. Oh, no, that's what, that one's not been um, gotten for. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, seeing as we've now got six in total, I will be... Pausing the SCP redeems just to be sure that we're not going to get too much in depth. Uh, Wigrin, hello and welcome. Just dropping by for a good luck, having a good one. Feel like playing some Cyberpunk today. Also, so far from what I've heard of the SCP, um, I keep expecting someone to burst out seeing a modern Major General. Possibly. As SCP is literally that song would oh good god. Of course there is. Interviewer's note. While 049 is capable of communicating in a very human way, there is a strange sense of unease that one experiences when in his when in its presence. Make no mistake. Yeah. Make no mistake, there is something very uncanny about this entity indeed. Try to get him out to sing that they refused. A I don't sing, B I don't want to get DMCA'd. 
the color red as an SCP. I'm not surprised, but I'm also impressed they can write like that. Additionally, we've confiscated that pointed stick the, S the SCP-049 keeps waving around. Part of this was due to standard confiscation protocols for the possession of anomalies, and part because 049 really is a menace swinging us around like he does. The entity was displeased at first, but after we made some concessions in providing it with test subjects, which are admittedly more for the benefit of our own research, it warmed up the idea. I always knew you wouldn't see I'm just joking. Good, good. Addendum 049.2, Observation Log. While in containment at Site-19, 049 has spent a considerable amount of time studying and performing surgery on various mammalian rep corpses it has been provided. Why did I... I always did mammalian reptilian. That doesn't work, actually. I was just about to say that doesn't work and those are incompatible, then I realised that no, wait, I actually have an OC that is essentially ma mammalian reptilian. I finished drawing him last night. Um, 049 will routinely spend several days performing surgery, and then, regardless of whether or not the corpse becomes an instant of 049 stroke 2, spending several more days documenting its findings in a thick layer of the journal stored within its doctor's bag. 049 will often seek to share its findings with members of the Foundation staff. The following is a log of several occasions which, during which 049 was observed operating on a mammalian corpse. Um, observation Log 049.0L.1 Summary Subject 049 Prefe Preface A test subject, D85123, was introduced into 049's containment cell. The entity expressed sincere gratitude towards all members of the containment and research staff. Anyway, see you all later. The value of C without visuals. See you later, Wigrin. Have yourself a good time. And see you later. And thanks for coming in as long as you did. Observation notes. 049 began by asking 85123 several standard medical, medical questions as it began removing tools from its bag. Shortly, shortly after finishing its preparations, 049 quickly closed the dis distance between the two, killing the subject with a touch to its throat. Afterwards, 049 made a number of considerable alterations to the basic structure of the subject's corpse, often introducing fluids from within its bag into the subject by way of a hand-powered pump and copper tubing. The resulting 049 stroke 2 instance became animated, flailing and grasping at the walls of the chamber with a number of manufactured limbs while moaning out of an oblong orifice now present in its sternum. During this time, 049 was observed taking notes of incidents in its journal and remarking to the watching research staff about the efficacy of its cure. Security personnel entered the chamber to move 049 back to containment and were attacked by the instance. The security team dispatched the 049 stroke 2 instance and 049 returned to containment with no resistance, stating that it was pleased with the results. Observational Log 049.0L.2 Summary Subject 049 Preface 049 was provided with the corpse of a recently deceased goat. 049 expressed gratitude at the provision. Observation notes, 049 operated on the goat corpse for several days, eventually resulting in an instance of 049 stroke 2. 049 expressed pleasure in this outcome, though admitted that the disease was still in its nascent stage. My veterinarian practice is rudimentary, but the patient responded well to the procedure. Observational log 049.0L.3 summary. Subject 049. Preface, 049 was provided to the corpse of a recently deceased orangutan. 049 expressed, expressed, expressed noted gratitude at the provision due to the similarities between the orangutan and common human physiology. Observational notes, 049 spent several days operating on the orangutan, reanimating it several times. However, 049 appeared to be discontent with the results it experienced, returned to the creature three times after its initial um, reanimation for additional work. After it was unable to reanimate the corpse a fifth time, 049 turned the corpse over to a foundation staff for incineration, stating, I have learned so much from this, though I fear my early optimism was misplaced. I hadn't yet come across such a, a stumbling block on my road to the cure. More subjects like this were doing a great great deal in advancing my research. I can't do that voice anymore, my throat hurts already. Fuck. I think I'm coming down with something. Bollocks. Of course I start to be coming down with something as I'm trying to do a fucking talking stream. Mm. 
In fact, actually, to combat that, I'm going to I'm going to be right back for a few minutes while I go and make myself a hot lemon and honey. So I'll be back fairly shortly. Bear with. Uh... I return. Sorry about that. I have the hottest of lemons with the honeys. Ow. Too hot, in fact. You must have read this one on your own because it sounds hella familiar. It is one of the most popular SCPs, as I understand. Well, one of the most well known ones. It's certainly one of the prominent enemies in SCP Containment Breach. Uh, thank you, E, for your contribution to the VTuber stream challenge. Um, observational log 049.ol.7. Full. Subject 049. Preface. 049 was provided the corpse of recently deceased bovine. 049 expressed mild annoyance at the provision, though it accepted nonetheless. Footnote. 049 had stated its desire to work on human subjects several times between this occasion and the earlier provision of an orangutan, noting its discontentedness when they would not be provided. Observation notes. 049 spent several days operating on the bovine corpse, breaking only to dine on a requested dinner of thin crackers, salted pork, and hard cheese. Footnote. 049 has expressed that it does not require sustenance, but enjoys it and feels that the food helps to put it in the right mind to operate. Mood. Beginning first by embalming the corpse, 049 was observed producing a number of long syringes from its bag, each containing a different dark viscous fluid. 049 described these fluids as essence of the humours, and elaborated by saying the pestilence may bring about a, sim a systemic imbalance. In such a case, before true healing can begin, one must find the humours imbalanced or the body will reject the cure. It sounds like pathologic at this point. Can't work on an empty stomach. True. 
049 added to this statement by saying, this, of course, this is, of course, elementary knowledge for the practical physician. I would have thought you would learn this during your education. Condescending bastard. <clears throat> Over the next few days, 049 spent a considerable amount of time adjusting the organs of the bovine corpse with a number of large metal instruments. After eight days, 049 produced a lightning rod, which Dr. Ham exchanged for an electric cattle prod attached to an extension cord. <laughs> <laughs> and struck the corpse in several locations. This action seemingly had um, the effect of reanimating the bovine, which once again became ambulatory, despite the, insert the inversion of the head and reorientation of the limbs. Oh, good God. Oh, that's horrifying, but also kind of funny at the same time. I don't know why. I think part of the hilarity lies in the fact that of the mental image of a plague doctor repeatedly smacking the corpse of a dead of a dead cow with a cattle prod. Not you know like not no not not using it in the way that you would think a cattle prod would be using, you know, just touching it. It says here struck the corpse, as in he smacked the shit out of it with a cattle prod. Oh god. And Mock, thank you for the hydration reminder. Well, I haven't been um, uh, taking those off. I've been doing them. Remember, they didn't have me really have medical licenses back then. Nope. Just like Dr. Z doesn't in Borderlands. Follow-up interview. Begin log. With, it, with Dr. Hammond 049 again. We've watched you work for several weeks now, and honestly, I'm not sure I understand what you're doing. Can you describe the real process in detail? Q, hello and welcome! Sometimes you just got to hear the dead cow with the whatever the fuck you just said. Cattle prod! You, you arrived just in time. We were talking about a deranged plague doctor who's clearly the only... Uh, the thing that's wrong with him is because he's French. Mentioned that, you know, it would be perfect for you to come along. And here you are. Ah, uh, and he is French, but he speaks he speaks the King's English in, um, well enough, and I gave him a very, very English accent. Just because, you know, superiority. Oh, goodness, no. The process is most intensive. As I said to your assistant, the best instruction you will find about my methods are here in my journals, as I have kept exhaustive records of my work there. Uh, footnote. Notably, 049's journals are not written in any known language, and attempts by linguists and codebreakers to decipher them have been unsuccessful. I see. My concern, Doctor, is that we still don't understand what you're seeking to cure, or how it manifests, or how turning these creatures into quasi-living mindless drones helps you in that effort. You don't understand the pestilence? Even after all this time? Doctor, it is an unspeakable horror! One that has shown its true face many times before, and will again. I find myself blessed with the wisdom and good senses needed to root it out and destroy it, but many like yourself cannot. It is a cruel judgment, I fear, to be at the mercy of a disease you cannot fully comprehend. That still doesn't answer my question. How is your cure any kind of cure at all? It is a cure! You may laugh at my efforts if you please, but do not besmirch the good name of scientific progress that has developed this great mercy. What you so short-sightedly see here is a life better than any this creature could have hoped for, stricken as it was with the pestilence. This creature is now clean, unable to spread the pestilence, and free from the terror it would have experienced otherwise. This is hardly a creature at all, Doctor. It's not even... Do not jape with me, sir! You and your colleagues are like so many others, unable to look past minor setbacks to see the salvation taking place before your very eyes. Do you not... Do you wait to remove rotten timbers until the hall collapses on top of you? No, you find them and you pull them out and replace them with those untouched by rot. And most of all, you do not simply mock the structure because it now looks different to you. It is strong. It is free of disease. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to agitate you. I'm just trying to understand. Yes, well, do mind your words in the future, Doctor. I am a professional, but even professionals may feel the bite of pride in dealing with criticism of their masterpiece. I will forgive this as an act of good faith between colleagues. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, that will be all. Another test subject on usual schedule. You know my preference of subjects with more human anatomies. End log. You definitely did read this and listen to the audios. 
I did it better. Just saying. I haven't listened to the audios, but you know, I raised very British English per English voice. Perfect for 049. Attending researchers note, 049 does seem to genuinely want to help other humans, though it has not yet been able to provide a concrete example of what exactly it is trying to save us all from. I have watched it now over several weeks, and while the outcomes do not seem to ever change, 049 continues to claim that it is growing close to its perfect cure. I think the entity may be more aware of the reality of these outcomes than it would like us to think. Addendum 049.3, 2017 incident. Starting shortly after 049's initial containment, Dr. Ham conducted a number of interviews with the subject regarding its anomalous properties, and over time began to note its displeasure with its subject and 049-2 instances. Excuse me. This continued for a period of several months, during which 049 never exhibited any aggressive behaviours. On April the 6th, 2017, as Dr. Ham was... Sorry, April, April 16th, 2017... As Dr. Ham was entering 049's test chamber to conduct another routine interview, the entity began to grow anxious and asked Dr. Ham if he was feeling well. Following protocol, Dr. Ham reminded 049 that the interview was required, after which the entity became hostile and attacked Dr. Ham, killing him. Due to a lapse in security pro protocol and because Dr. Ham did not activate the in-chamber emergency system, Dr. Ham's corpse was not discovered until three hours later, by which point 049 had converted it into an instance of 049-2. stroke In the aftermath of this incident, 049 was interviewed by Dr. Theron Sherman. We're all doing the voice for different docs now. Balls! Interviewer Dr. Theron Sherman, Site 42, Interviewee 049. Begin log. I need you to explain yourself. SCP-049, you are being directed to explain your actions, and I will remind you that failure to cooperate will result in further restrictions during your containment. My actions do not need to be explained. You killed Raymond Ham and then butchered him until he... No, not dead. No, not not dead. He is, he is cured. Cured? Cured of what? The pestilence, sir. I thought you at least would realise what luck it is I detected it before. What pestilence? You keep going on and on about this pestilence, but you have not once been able to properly identify this disease. What could you have possibly seen in him today that you had not seen so many times before, though it would be worth his life? He... The pestilence presents and progresses in unforeseeable fashions, has a queer way of, of creeping into the unprepared, and... Call it what you want, Doctor. It was a mercy I did to him. He is cured. He is a vegetable. I I would not expect you to understand. You and your your ilk have proven time and time again to not be men of science, but men of, of emotion. You cannot appreciate the horrors I have seen, those many millions who have succumbed to the pestilence and been changed, who you cure. Your cure cost Ray his life. No good, sir, I have saved it. I would allow, you would allow this world to slip back into the, the despair of disease and death, ignoring that I have created a miracle. And what disease, what pestilence? He was a healthy man, he was a good doctor, I'm offering it freely to the afflicted. You are not worth this argument, sir. You are short-sighted and foolish. Dr. Ham was sick, and I... I cured him. I am the only one who can do this. My work must continue, and there is so much still to learn. So much to... I've had enough of this. Consider your allowances revoked. Welcome to containment 049. We're done here. And others can be saved. Even you, though you do not deserve it, might be saved. I can save them all. I can cast down this plague once and for all. I can do this. Only me. I, I, I saved. I saved him. Dr. Ham, I, I cured him. He was sick. I know he was sick. I know he was. And I, you're all sick, but I, I can save you. I can save all of you because I, I am the cure. Ow. Worth it, but ow. Addendum 049.4, .4, post-incident report interview. The following interview is an excerpt from the um, 4-16-17-049 incident report. The interview was conducted by Dr. Elijah um, Itkin, and it took place three weeks after the start of the initial investigation. I've got to do another voice. Penis. Maybe. Date, 5-7-17. Interviewer, Dr. Elijah Itkin. Interviewee, SCP-049. 
SCP-049, we conduct this interview to close our investigation of your actions taken on April 16th, the result of the death of a staff member. Do you have any comments to make? Only that I look forward to the day when you allow me to resume my work. I have spent the last few weeks compiling my notes and constructing a new theory for how the pestilence was able to infect someone in such an insidious manner that I nearly couldn't detect it. Have you experienced any remorse for your actions for the death of Dr. Ham? Ah, yes. Well, the death of a colleague is always regrettable, but in the face of the pestilence, we must be swift, Doctor, and act without hesitation. Dr. Sherman noted in his report that you seem to be mournful during your initial interview. Mourn? Perhaps. I had not thought that. It is lamentable that a fellow doctor became infected, but the work continues. Regrettable as, as it was, Dr. Ham's death provided an important insight. Living human subjects are the only way to proceed forward, I am decided. My cure is of little use on dead flesh, and I have gleaned all I can from your generous supply of corpses. My desires turn towards tending to those still living who suffer from the disease. I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. Oh, doctor, I wouldn't be so sure. Which is a link to a story called Going Home. Bollocks. <laughs> Not going to read that, but yeah. That's, that was SCP-049. Very, very good. But still, what the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, next we are going to be going on to SCP-5008. And what are we going after that? 1867. Now, bearing in mind, this is a pokey suggestion. This could be very long, or it could be very intricate, or it could just be very good, or all of the above. Series 6. 5008. Hush, it's called. Got quite a bit. It has got quite a bit. Be fine though. We'll be fine. Is there anything? Okay, well. Does the black moon howl? In night and science, we guard against all that would make it wail. Level 5 slash 5008 clearance verified. Welcome, researcher. By order of the Overseer Council, this file describes a Thalmail class anomaly and is restricted to the Overseer Council, selected Ethics Committee personnel, selected Site 01 personnel, and certain other selected Foundation personnel. Certain information may be withheld depending upon your relevance to this anomaly's operation. Disclosure of this information to authorized persons is punishable by termination. Item number, SCP-5008, level 5, top secret, containment class, esoteric, secondary class, Thalmiel, disruption class, dark, risk class, notice. Um, picture here, footnote of it, site 01, internal designation denoting the first individual to hold a given overseer position. Oh! SCP-5008 Prime as depicted by 0530, which is the very first 053. Um, and it has it also includes 0540 left and 0570. Well. Assigned site SCPF Site 01, Site Director not applicable, research head redacted, assigned task forces MTF Alpha 1, MTF Gamma 7. Special Containment Procedures. The site of 5008 Prime is physically contained by MTF Gamma 7, Burning, Burning Coronet, under standard security procedures for high prior priority anomalous archaeological locations, including perimeter fencing, landmines, and aerial drone man monitoring. Containment is simplified by thousands of years of erosion and shifting sands, which have almost entirely concealed the portions of 5008 Prime that were above ground at the time of its construction. MTF Gamma 7 personnel are not authorized to enter 5008 Prime to otherwise further investigate the structure or to know of its former or current contents. Further investigation of 5008 Prime is to be performed by personnel author authorized to access this file if deemed to be uh, sorry, if determined to be necessary by an overseal council member. 
5008 itself is contained in Sector 231 of the Thalmiel Wing of Site-01, which has been adapted from its original purpose as an aircraft hangar to store SCP-5008. A specially trained information security management team acting under the supervision of 051 monitors and operates the device as necessary for global security purposes. The actual activation of 5008 requires a majority vote by the Overseer Council or an order of mercy issued by a majority of authorised ethics committee delegates. Outside of formal Overseer Council or ethics committee votes, requests, suggestions and questions regarding 5008's operation may be submitted to 051's Site 01 Secretary, presently Therese Matcher. Oh, hell again. So I now realize that E was, you know, saying hello to Q because, you know, Q came into chat earlier. At first, I thought that my description of SCP-5008 made E think of Q immediately. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yes. Q is now to be deemed as an esoteric Thalmiel class SCP. I'm gonna that that's gotta be the quote. Oh well. Quote ten, quote one thousand fifty-seven. It just, it had to happen. It really did. Oh, uh, come on, OBS. There we are. Um. I just. I can never contain me. It, SCP can contain almost anything. Almost. Although, uh, to be fair, you are here, so yeah. Oh, shit. Containment breach. Any further discoveries related to GOI 5008, the Keepers, are to be censored and compartmentalized under the same restrictions as this file. 5008 is to be considered available for this purpose, but conventional information suppression tactics are in place as part of the operational profile of MTF Alpha 1 Red Right Hand. Should circumstances require it, unauthorized personnel are to be led, are, are to, be led to believe that there is no SCP-5008. Thalmio isn't meant to be contained, it is used to contain shit. Oh shit, that thing can end the world! Quick, throw cue at it! Stitches will get stitches and dropped in ditches. But when they, but when they die, they'll be met with bitches. Yeah, I'll do it. Should circumstances require it, unauthorized personnel are to be led to believe... Oh, wait, hang on. So outside of Site-01, SCP-5008 is not to be referred to except when absolutely necessary and then only as Hush, its approved code name. Description. SCP-5008 is the... Harpocrates Ushek Confidentiality Engine, which was developed primarily based upon materials recovered from er Erich... Erekesh Um, the chief monastery of the Erekeshan people, since, desi since designated 5008 Prime and GOI 5008. 5008 consists of over 4,200 cubic meters of various machine elements, the majority of which are automated and serve to amplify its te telepathic impact. The exact effective range of 5008 remains indeterminable, but it has been shown to operate with absolute precision over 1.1 million kilometers. Q may make it worse for SCP. 5008 is capable of immunizing, immunizing life forms within a preset area of effect against certain concepts, including general emotions, instincts, sensory abilities, and recent or long-term memories. Originally, 5008 was only capable of large-scale blunt cognitive alterations, but refinement over the past redacted historical cycles... ...which links to SCP-2000 and new discoveries pertaining to the now extinct Erekeshans has dramatically improved its accuracy, effectiveness, and ease of use. You will all become redacted. 
Oh, God, I wish I had um, some more of my mods here. It is fine. Um, 5008 is operated by means of a beryllium bronze clockwork device integrated into the circuitry of its control chamber, designated 5008 modus. This device consists of an equilateral triangular plate just under one meter in width, eventually evenly tessellated and engraved with precisely 300 of the fundamental glyphs of the um, Erekeshian written language and their mathematical system. This plate is affixed to a circular disk containing its clockwork components. But note. This assembly of 5008 modus has not allowed for its reverse engineering, but appears to have not affected its functional functioning after reassembly. The underside of this disc bears a partially damaged inscription of Mechanite's derivation referring, re reading, To the friends of the temple, we grant this token of truce. It is signed in the same dialect with a name that may be phonetically rendered as Boomor O. Depression of the glyphs on the surface of 5008 modus, or combinations thereof, activate its internal mechanisms and, through unknown means, def define concepts to be acted upon by 5008 as a whole. Conventional digital control systems incorporated at the time of 5008's construction are also present and in the chamber to allow for targeting. Addendum 5008 stroke 1, 5008 prime. 5008 Prime was discovered by independent Hellenistic archaeological prospectors in the month of Corvus in 1-1938. Um, one but note, Site 01 internal designation denoting the year 1938 AD of the second iteration of history. At a location which now corresponds to a point redacted, kilometers redacted of Alexandria, Egypt, the site was acquired under eminent domain by the Treasury of Hellenistic um, Potentate. But note, see site 01, Internal Archives, um, low J, January 12th, redacted 2014, Parahistorical Cultures of the Redacted Cycle, Volume 1. And subsequently designated as a historical heritage site. It was not until 1, 1944 that the Foundation's Secret Consulate for North African Nations was to, able to obtain access in return for the relaxation of e economic sanctions from other nations. 5008 Prime had not originally been considered to be a point of interest related to any of the uh, ancient anomalous cultures of the Middle East, but inspection quickly proved otherwise. Uh, first report to the overseers, 6th of Cancer, 19, 1944, Primary Observations of Archaeological Sites 231. To the Council, our assumptions were wrong. The ruins of what local treasurers call Al Aleximet is no ordinary par pharaonic tomb. The stonework is right, all hewn limestones and granites, but not even the priests of the old kingdoms could work the sorceries laid within its walls. This work could only have been done in the bygone age of Erekesh. You have likely already heard how our ship was built schedule, and thus we only arrived at last night. Our progress thus far is limited. I have established a safe zone for us to camp in, and Kleppman has set up his sonar contraption. The security men, meanwhile, have rounded up some of the old expedition members with the help of the Treasury's agents. We have been able to obtain very little of them, very little information of them, sadly. They are all nearly too terrified to speak of it. Some show definite signs of cognito disturbance. From what we were able to discern, the treasurers examined 231's upper floors and three, and three of those underground. They intended to do more and would have if one of the historians had not stumbled out of a lower chamber without his skin on. I was able to examine the body. A delayed action, a Nalakian curse, elegant security. Okay. Just, you know, casually without his skin on. After that, they cannot agree what exactly scuttled their investigation. One man rambled of a great beast like an alligator with the mane of a lion. Another could do nothing but recite Kabbalistic rites in native Hebrew, which he did not previously practice or speak. In any event, it is clear that the treasury is utterly clueless as to the significance of what they have discovered here. If atheism were not a... Um, a sacred tent of ours, I would thank the gods that they had the wisdom to leave well enough alone. In the, pu in the pursuit of science, sanity, and safety, I remain Alexander Tellus. P.S. I'm attaching Kleppman's scrawling so you may see the overall layout of 231 for yourselves. I've heard some of the other doctors hint that desk drawers, back rooms, and wine cellars may no, longer, may no longer be sufficient to hold all the things we investigate. Perhaps someday we should build an asylum of our own. Another report to the overseers.
30th of Council, 1944. Continued investigation into Site 231. To the Council, I despise myself for my, for my weakness, for I cannot help but begin this report by bemoaning the dreadful news reaching us from Europe. They say the Germans have taken London, and the resistances in Spain, Italy, and Russia are faltering. I have studied the occult all my life, and so I may confirm firsthand what is said by some fortunate enough to live in the light. There are no demons walking this earth so brutal and willing to destroy as the fascist man. Bro. But I do not only write to commiserate. The keepers may offer us some slim light in this darkness. One of our linguists, a young man whose name continually escapes me, has chanced upon some scraps of old um, Irakeshian writing. The series of letters accompanied with what he says in the Mecklen dialect known to the treasurers. We have dispatched him to Cairo to seek scholarly assistance in translating the letters. He has also photographic records of all other Erakeshian script we have found within 231, and thus may provide far more value than the whole rest of our expedition. I shall certainly not begrudge him the credit if it is to be so. On the topic of 231 itself, there is little to be said. The excavation remains slow, the artifacts remain largely incomprehensible, the spell work remains tedious, and the casualty rate remains high. As usual, our inventory for the past week is attached. Alexander, tell us. Another report to the Overseers. 2nd of Capricorn, 1944. Supplemental report, Tragedy in Cairo. Councillors, the linguist I mentioned in my prior reports, Johann Bri Bridget, is dead. He had ceased correspondence with our encampment, and two days ago, Kletman saw set out to hold him up for it. They found him locked up inside his own chambers, apparently having engraved in some rather ungentlemanly engaged in some rather ungentlemanly behaviour before slashing both his wrists with his pen. Servants had reported hearing him screaming in the night, but also he rebuffed all attempts to approach or speak to him. What is profoundly more disturbing than the grotesquery of his death is the content of the translation he had produced that night. The scholars he had consulted were indeed able to match the Erekeshian script to one of the extinct Meccan tribes of their region, and were highly grateful for his newly provided first-hand evidence. Flushed with success, Bridget struck himself up in his private with the photographs to set to work on what he termed the Erekesh Codex. According to the text, the Erekeshians, like the Nalaka, and ourselves it must be admitted, hated and feared the superphysical beings of this universe. They wrote the Codex to be a less a holy book and more a sacred vow and witch hunter's manual in one, to pass on the knowledge of how to keep the world sane. Many times they struggled against the gods and their worshippers, many times they lost, and some few times they won. Eventually, all that was left of them was Erekeshim, which, where their way of keeping began. Here Bridget's translation grew muddied, likely due to fatigue and blood loss. All that could be discerned from his work is that it was the Meccans who that then sought some concession from the Keepers in exchange for some weapon to help them in their campaign. I've delegated operational management of 231 to Kletman and Captain Morstan. I would leave for Cairo in the morning and take over the translation. I must know what he died for. Alexander, tell us. Another report to the Overseers. Another sip of drink. Thirteenth of Capricorn, nineteen forty-four. Exciting breakthrough regarding the Codex. To the Council. In looking over our expedition as prior inventories, you may have taken particular note of a three-sided bronze contraption we dug up about five weeks ago. So you try and eat a stuff that's been injected by seven month old mayonnaise. That was a twinkie. At first we assumed it to be a kind of Turing machine, intended to perform mathematical operations that would take a mere mortal many hours. Since I translated some new passage of the Codex, however, I believe I have begun to perceive its true function. Mr. Twinkies, I have not been able to find them. Well, at least Fox hasn't been able to. She hasn't mentioned seeing them anywhere. I use the term Codex loosely. Indeed, the writings we have found within 231 are many separate works, but we may as well refer to them collectively. We knew from the moment that, it was that we found the device that its uppermost 10 symbols were the first 10 integers, 0, 1, and so on, because they were borrowed by the keepers from the Meccans. Furthermore, there is a Meccan maker's mark upon the underside. We assumed then that the remaining symbols were of some mathematical system and discarded the whole thing. After all, we Westerners did not come to Egypt for ancient mathematics, but for ancient magics. But then Dr. Light pointed out to me that since Bridget's demise, we had not compared his and my notes against the sections of Codex on the artifacts we had catalogued prior to his death, the, bro the bronze being a prime example. When I looked back over it, all was clear. It, in it includes all the basic components of the Erekeshian language. As if this device were our only sample of the dead language, we could write anything in it, and that is its purpose, to write. I know the membership of the Council tends towards the scientific, so I will be straightforward in my explanation. 
The clockwork is made to make certain ideas, particularly religious ones, literally unthinkable in mortal beings. This, of course, spits in the face of modern alienists have deduced to the functioning of the brain, but it is not possible to disbelieve the codex. Those among you who originally came to our course from the military, at least, shall see the tactical significance of such a power. We have laboured for a long time in the shadows, counsellors, paying steep bribes and concocting con convoluted expl explanations to cover our activities, but with the Keeper's methods, I believe we may amplify our operations a thousandfold. There is an experiment I intend to perform with this device. If it goes as I predict, I shall pack up at once and return to headquarters with it. Alexander, tell us. That's worrying already. Report to the overseers. Nineteenth of Corvus, 19, 1944. Councillors, new information has come to light too sensitive for this means of communication. Request immediate translocation for privy conference. Now is the time for all good men to die a warning. Red sky in mourning. I just got chills. And the hairs on my, on my arm are standing on end. What the fuck? What the fuck? Overseer Council Emergency Session Transcript, exerted. 20th of Corvus, 1944. Tell us. That is not what I am saying, sir. 0570. Oh, but I think that it is. You are suggesting we turn over our whole operation security to an ancient machine cult's fortune-telling device. 0530. 7. You know that's not what he's suggesting. The device, 04, uh, 0540. Tell us translation of this so-called code. It's not even peer-reviewed. Tell us. That is simply not... 0521, enough. We don't have this we're not we don't need to have this argument again. Now, Doctor, the chief concern of four, five, and seven is valid. How are we supposed to know that this thing won't do to us what it did to your test subject? Tell us. Donovan had no training in resisting foreign mental impulses. There was no way to predict his reaction to a simple O5 A50. No way to predict spontaneous catatonia and permanent addling of the brain. Don't worry, that's just the mimetic ag agent acting. Fuck. Uh, 0521. Let him finish. Tell us. I. No one regrets the experiment's failure more than I, but the results prove the need for further research, at the very least. As I was saying, if a single word, key, if a single word keyed through that thing can reduce an adult brain to the stage of an infant, then what could we do with the other 300? Surely there's no end to people whose mental faculties are an inconvenience to us. Silence. 0521. We're in a state of war. Fell asleep because he's still in bed, getting up now and going to be the computer. No problem at all, Torian. 0570. Our nations, maybe. Our mission could continue under the Reich. 0560. We all know you would be eager for that. 057. How? 0510. This bickering does not suit us. I declare the vote open. Shall we permit Telus's continued use of the machine? I move in favour. 0521. I move against. 053. Favour. 054, against. 050, we are scientists, not sorcerers. I move against. 0560, it is not the way of scientists to reject that which clearly exists and may be useful. I move in favour. 0570, I stand to gain the most, but this is wrong precedent to set. I move against. 0510, it is decided. Tell us, bring the device to headquarters. I shall obtain thaumatology thaumatological and neurological researchers to convene a secure location and assess this device independently. We can refer to this among ourselves as Project Modus. 0521. And who is to pay for this research, if I may ask? 0510. I shall employ my own resources. The common fund shall not suffer for this. 0570. And the security factors? 0510. I shall make all needed arrangements. 0521. If that's acceptable to the rest of the council, then our business is concluded. Tell us. Thank you, councillors. Addendum 5008-2, stroke development of um, SCP-5008. 5008-modus was subsequently transferred to 0510's residence in Redacted for analysis and reverse engineering. The recovery, translation, transfer, and destruction of the remainder of the Erekesh Codex proceeded until 1-1957. Footnote 5. Other sections of the Codex continued to be recovered from other sources until and after 5008 was upgraded to its present configuration in Redacted 2155. It is believed that other sections remain uncontained, primarily in the hands of paraligious organizations associated with the mythos of the so-called Scarlet King. I'm worried. 
at which point 5008 came into occasional use as a Tholmiel class SCP object. It was not until the 1-1970s that research into mechanized thaumatology enabled 5008's use on a scale con concomitant with most information security branches, and several decades more until it was capable of cognitive management on the scale effective in a K-class scenario. Footnote. Date. Footnote. Data expunged. Oh no, oh no is right. Over centuries of use, however, abnormalities in 5008's operations became more and more readily apparent. For instance, the risk of brain hemorrhage had almost entirely been alleviated since its earliest days of operation began to recur. Additionally, use of 5008 was linked to outbreaks of a number of anomalous psychological conditions among populations targeted by it, as well as various undesirable ideological and ideatic developments among said populations. Some related materials are compiled below. Is the report 5008 Alpha. Date filed 3-29-1998. Date of occurrence 3-28-1998. Location Site 1 B Wing Thomas Kletman Thaumatological Research Laboratory Chamber 7. Anomaly involved 5008 Modus. Personnel involved none. Report filed by A. Clef. Priority Et Key or whatever the fuck it is we're using now. I went into the clockworks chamber after hours, no I'm not telling you why, and saw that some fuckwit left its containment seal undone. I mean, this is this is literally a hundred thousand dollar magnetic door, projecting a goddamn tetherback brick. How the fuck? So anyways, I had a look at the thing. The plate key is that have been left on specifically with numbers 21, footnote, canam, meaning sky, moon, white, female, etc. 43, Footnote of Ushek, meaning dark, night, unseen, hidden, etc. And 221. Footnote of Altab, meaning sound, voice, pain, howl, etc. Light, dark, howl. Moon in the, dark, moon in the night sky howling. Some egghead will just attach what they, um, what they all mean, so anyone reading this won't need to look them up. We didn't find out who was in there. The access log only showed scheduled visits for the past forever, actually. Like with any security breach in 01, the hand was particularly was practically carrying people out of that sector the whole day. Miles was the first thermatologist I managed to get in for a look at the thing. He told me over lunch the next day that going by the power usage in the time the clockwork was unaccounted for, the plate keys had been left running in that configuration for at least several hours. Typically, maintenance has no goddamn clue how they didn't notice a surge in that time. Several paragraphs omitted for lack of relevance. Oh dear. Site 1, internal memorandum. To 051 Secretary, Project Modus mailing list. From Senior Researcher, researcher Lynn Smith. Date 5-8-2005. Subject, Operation Stargazer, Emergency. Site 9 has been crippled by a wave of uh, messianic delusion. One of the janitorial staff managed to get their hands on another one of those damned books. Now the whole staff are burning books, documents, and we fear some of the more mobile skips on site. The nearest task force is trying to convince the citizens of Sacramento that their mayor didn't really give a cognito hazard lace speech and turned into an otter. So the council has fast-tracked WRC's motion to deploy modus in that area. I recommend starting with the umlaut tree of meanings to make the bastards illiterate and follow up at your own discretion. Volume 2, Chapter 37 of the Codex has some advice about countering fifths meme plexes. I have to go get chewed out by five over this, so you'll be on your own for at least an hour. Don't screw this up. Recover text messages. Forward. The following was recovered from unauthorized personal cell phones belonging to junior researchers Layton in red and Ross in blue, who served as part of the 500 control team. I will try to give this to mind. So, starting off with Ross. Hey, Layton. Hey, Ross. Remember that thing with the fivists in A? What? Why? Well, there's this one... Oh, what about it? Well, there's this one thing I didn't put in the report. What the fuck? Why not? It just didn't seem relevant. What do you mean? What was it? Well, you know that thing I told you the other day? How could I forget? It's not funny. Really about serial killers? No, it's not funny. It's fucking weird. Not as weird as our day jobs. Ah, you're right. Anyway, the LAPD caught one of these psychos last week. Let me guess, you used your work computers to hack the crime scene photos like some perv. I'll fuck you. Okay, so what did you actually find out? Have a look. Cognito has this image file expunged. 
or with a footnote. Here, researcher Layton uploaded an image of the then of then unknown cognito hazardous erection text. However, similarities between it and sections of the known codex established cellular data crawlers to flag this conversation as suspicious. The crime scene and serial murder investigation were subsequently t contained. Holy shit, is that what I think it is? Yep. They found these done in blood all over the dude's house. But how can he know about this? It's pretty deep lore. He was one of the cafeteria people at Site 9. C. You thinking what I'm thinking? Hell yeah. Incident report 508 stroke. I do not know what that symbol means. It's a triangle. I do. If if someone knows what the mathematical, um, what the, oh no, sorry, it's Greek, isn't it? What the Greek alphabet of a triangle means, go for it. Date filed 1 3 2006. Date of occurrence 1 2 2006. Location site 1 Thalmia Wing, sector 231. Anomaly involved SCP 5008. Personnel involved junior researchers Layton and Ross. Report filed by senior research Linsmith. Priority Eki. There's no easy way to say this, so I'll just be straightforward with it. Delta, thank you very much, Torium. We found out where Leighton and Ross disappeared to. They hung themselves inside 5008. Specifically, they hung themselves from the rafters inside the primary accelerator. Footnote, slang term for a part of 5008 that uses, uh, utilizes space-time deformers to help guide its telepathic signals. How in God's name they managed to get in there, we don't know. All the service hatches were meant to have been sealed un until the next internal checkup, three months from now. As far as maintenance logs go, they were. According to forensics, their bodies are about five months dead, which leaves a whole month since they vanished uncounted for. But that's not the worst part. The only reason we found them before the scheduled checkup was because we happened to be giving a tour to Professor Kitsnubor, who was paying us a visit. Apparently he did the overseers a favour and wanted to look at the Keeper's last relic. He told us one of the service houses was just barely misaligned, and he could smell, as he put it, human orifice leakings inside. We had maintenance prior to open and found the two of them entwined in the air, suspended by a single extension cord, without their clothes, swaying over a remarkably complex wheel. Footnote. A keeper's wheel, a type of erection magic circle used for any variety of purposes. Done in a mixture of their blood and, well, other fluids. Fortunately, Nabor had the presence of mind to sho shove one of the techs off his ladder before he got a clear look at the thing. He broke his arm, but at least he won't have, at least, at least he won't have to be amnestitized. We've had the wheel photographed and passed off to linguistics and got some D-class to mop it up. Also, as project leader, I'm officially removing 5008 from the active list of Thaumiels until we thoroughly review all of its activity over the past four months for any irregularities. Ew. Executive Memorandum. 2051 from 052. Date 2 11 19 10. Subject Update on the Berkshire on the Berkshire Sisters. Salutations. We have transferred the girls to a suitable private institution for their con convalescence. Three months have been allotted for them to recover from their ordeal. Then the Bates boarding school shall expect them. The girls shall be housed there in three shared rooms on the fourth floor, together but separate from the other pupils. We trust that the strange circumstances of their arrival in the middle of term with private accommodations will trigger the suspicions and jealousies typical to females of their age and ensure they, should be, they shall be socially as well as physically contained. Sister Catherine is to accompany them to both places and monitor them for any relapses of a theological nature. Brother Aloysius assures me that this is little probability, but he, of course, never believed that he would have to contend with a live birth at all. By my return, I expect that you shall have rectified the harm you have caused with your wretched machine. If you are as nimble as usual in manipulating the circumstances, you may avoid expulsion from the council. In the meantime, may the blind and the deaf guard you. 2. Error. Subsequent files withheld. Notice from Redacted, Site 01, File Serve Administration. There is a certain curiosity that all new personnel assigned to Site 01 are expected to express. In fact, it's more often than not a large part of why they get assigned here. That nose-pushing attitude is essential to a lot of the work here at Site 01. We are the watchful eye, the sturdy shield, and the sharp sword of humanity. Here, passivity is death. The x 0 SCPs are among the most searched on our private servers. Closely following them are any of the SCPs that typical personnel are absolutely forbidden to know about, including this one. Almost no one who gets assigned here can resist the temptation to look them up on their very first night. And if our personnel department thought they could, they wouldn't get assigned here. 
There's no need to worry. You're not in trouble for looking so far into 5008's documentation. It's entirely my fault you've seen any of this. Your passphrase is not meant to give you this much access, and the technical fault that led to the error has been corrected. As I'm sure you notice, it's not just sensitive for its strategic functions, but it's for, its, for its critical role in maintaining human sanity. The idea is simply too dangerous for some people to have. As it turns out, the idea of 5008 is not one you are meant to have. I've uploaded the cognito hazard to this file. Don't bother scrolling up and looking for it. The process should set in by the time you finish reading the message. A security team will drop by, wipe your memory, and that will be that. Why the fuck am I getting chills again? What the fuck? While you're frozen in place, take a minute and think about the oath you took this morning. We shall make secure all humanity, even should they live in the blackest places of the earth. We shall contain all those that live under the moon and in the other secret places as, do, as we do under the sun. We shall protect the life of our own people and those we cannot imprison, so that none ever again howl in heartbreak. Black moon howl. Fuck! No hard feelings. Welcome to site one. Fuck. That was a really fucking good one. Fucking... T Arms, will you piss off? Will you stop doing this? Ugh. Fuck. On to the next one now. And we're on to eight one eight six seven. And the next one after that will be one oh eight. Yes. That was a that was a pokey classic. We're now going on to one that has been su um, suggested by Jack and has been given to us via E. So let's have a look. One eight six seven. Might as well go to the to that bottom one and scroll up. One eight six seven. Known as a gentleman. What the fuck? It's a multicolored slug or snail type creature. Okay. So, item number, SCP-1867. Object class, Anomalous Organism, Sapient. Containment class, Passive. Hazard rating, Green. Standard containment policies, Aquatic Specimen Tank, Small. Environment and care requirements identical to that of non-anomalous members of the species. Associated items placed in storage and secure storage vault, 16. Amenities available upon request. Oh, you've been holding out on this one because it leads to a lot of other stuff. Oh... Okay, well, there's no, there's no other links or anything um, like that there, so it is just going to be this one. But, you know, if it opens up knowledge on, on um, other SCPs, then... Ooh. Special containment procedures. All descriptions of anomalous persons, places, or objects made by SCP-1867 must be correlated by at least two other sources before resources may be allocated for further research. Description. 1867 is a nuda branch of the species Nimbrotha kubariana, variable neon slug, measuring 11.7 centimeters or 4.6 inches in length. So everything else just tells possible. That's nice. I can words. No, you can't. No one can words here. Ah. There are no physical differences between 1867 and any other me member of the species. Here's one you see on YouTube. Nice. 1867 is sapient and capable of telepathic communication with the same range as a typical old human voice. It identifies itself as Lord Theodore Thomas Blackwood. I hope it doesn't have a voice. I hope it has no speak spoken lines. Because I will have to do a voice befitting a, a lord with a name like that. He tell Jack they've got uh, that she's got good SCPs. Yeah, she definitely does. 
a British explorer and naturalist, and speaks with terminology and style appropriate to late 19th century England, is a generally friendly and cooperative with researchers. 1867 makes repeated claims of past exploits and accomplishments, including service in the Second Opium War, expeditions to remote regions of the world, and encounters with various rare creatures and uncontacted peoples. Despite this questionable validity of many of its claims, 1867 has shown in-depth knowledge of geography, zoology, botany, archaeology, anthropology, and linguistics relating to its claimed regions of exploration, as well as more esoteric fields such as obscure mythology, mysticism, and cryptozoology. 1867 does not seem to realise or willfully ignores any inconsistencies in its own recollections as well as any events or information during, dating after approximately 1910. When requested to give proof of his exploits, 1867 provided an address near Redacted England claimed that it would be more than willing to donate its collection. Investigation of the address led to a cottage owned by one Ms. Redacted who claimed to be keeping the house for Lord Blackwood. Further questioning failed to reveal any, de any details of SCP-1867's nature of origins or beyond what information 1867 had already provided. Ms. Redacted died of heart failure five days after Foundation engines began investigations. Investigation of the cottage revealed an underground vault contain containing over 3,000 artifacts, zoological and botanical specimens, a library containing over 5,000 items, and a functioning, if outdated, laboratory. All materials within the collection were catalogued, removed, and relocated by the Foundation over the course of three weeks. Addendum 01. A full listing of items recovered from 1867's collection may be found in document 1867-VL. A summary of noteworthy items is as follows. 116 unknown species of plants, 107 unknown species of insects, 28 unknown species of lizards, 23 unknown species of fish, 14 unknown species of amphibians, excuse me, excuse me again, 12 unknown species of mammals, fossils pertaining to 8 unknown species of dinosaur, fossils pertaining to 12 unknown species of prehistoric mammal, artifacts belonging to 29 unknown indigenous cultures, 35 handwritten journals contain recordings of events described by 1867. Written accounts match with verbal, say variations, exaggerations on the part of 1867 in retelling, and have been dated to the approximate time period of the events described. 20 kilograms of processed opium! Whichever site that went to had a party afterwards, I'm guessing. Fucking hell. Collection of firearms of make and model not correlating with any known manufacturers, including three wide ball muskets marked as Dr. B.T. Moth's effective particle destabilizers. These items are non-functional. Detailed globes of Mercury, Venus, Mars, and the Galilean moons, accompanied by notes detailing possible paths of surface exploration. A heavily modified four-seat horse carriage containing instruments of unknown purpose. A note attached to the door reads, On the Fritz, speak with Henry, in handwriting matching that of the journals. Data expunged, four agents were killed after activation before the object was destroyed. When questioned about the item, 1867's response was, I did warn you to be careful around my collection. That bloody thing nearly took my head off in Woking back in 1997 when, when I found it. Addendum 02. The following interview is dated blank 2012. Oh, good God. I'm going to have to do a voice for it, aren't I? Fuck. Doctor redacted. Good morning, Lord Blackwood. Ah, good morning, Doctor. Wonderful to see you. Come in, come in. Have yourself a seat. Now, if I remember correctly, the last time you were here, I was telling you about the time I was captured by the Ubula tribe of the Congo. Actually, I had some questions about that story today. Our research turned up no trace of that people. They don't seem to be this. Of course not. There weren't any of the Ubula tribe left after the village was attacked by Makeli Mimei. I still regret for not being able to bag that monster when I had the chance. It's a persistently elusive creature. Mm, that's a stretch, sir. Do you have any corroborating evidence just to make sure what you're saying is true? There's always a chance your vault was filled with fakes. Nonsense! I would never fabricate any of my work. Why, it's against the very heart of being a naturalist. Well, while I'm repeatedly amazed by your institution here, you seem to be missing the explorer's spirit. When I scaled the Himalayas in search of the monks of the Golden Mountain, did I worry about what others had said about them? Of course not. I went and found out for myself. Climbed those mountains with my own two hands. You do realise you're a sea slug, right? Good heavens, boy, have you been drinking? That's utterly ridiculous. If you can't be bothered to be sensible, I have no reason to speak with you. Go get yourself a nice cup of tea and sober up. The fact that that's fucking canonical is even worse. 
What the fuck? That's almost as bad as you. I smacked him with my god rod. Oh god. Lord Blackwood, everyone. Good heavens, boy, have you been drinking? Fucking hell. Oh my god. Oh. Jack knows what she's doing when she's recommending SCPs. She really does. Holy shit. Oh god, right. Now, next. SCP-108. Holy crap, we're only halfway through um, the stream. We've got some... We've got quite a few done. Bloody hell. So this one is courtesy of Nier, I believe. I... I already completed it before I looked, so if it is you near, then thank you. If it's not, then I apologize to who actually submitted this one. But the next SCP after this is going to be 1230, which is another of Jack's. Um, it looks like, honestly, because we've got this one, 1230, and then 049 stroke J, we might actually be able to open up for more submissions. It is. Well, thank you, Nia. Very much appreciate. I always, I always enjoy your contributions because they're either, they're either going to be completely silly as all fuck or really, really fucking haunting. Um, one oh eight. Extra dimensional nasal cavity. Extra dimensional nasal cavity. So we're going into a case of Tardis nose, are we? You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and take a quick bathroom break. I'll be back in just a second. I'll try to get that mental image of Tardis nose out of my head. Back in a sec.
Fucking TARDIS nose. <clears throat> Thank you, Torian, for the, uh, the quote. Got a case of TARDIS nose, are we? I swear my English is better than that. I didn't say it like that. <clears throat> Let's bring things back up. He said, really? Hmm, fair enough. Uh, right. Item number SCP-108, Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures 108 is contained entirely by Subject 108 Stroke 1. Subject 108 Stroke 1 should be contained in a standard containment cell measuring 3 meters by 3 meters, furnished with whatever items are requested unless said items compromise security. Subject 108 Stroke 1 is permitted to leave the room, wander freely, and eat in the main canteen. Medical examination to be performed on one Subject 108 Stroke 1 daily. Filters to be changed as necessary. Description. 108 is accessible through the nostrils of Subject 108 Stroke 1. Subject is an African-American female, 51 years old, see Addendum 108 Stroke 1, who was previously employed as a cashier at Redacted, a small-town hardware store in Redacted, Kentucky, since Redacted. SCP-108 has been housed at Site-17. Endoscopic examination for 108 reveals that the area accessible via the subject's nostrils is not the human nasal, nasal capacity, cavity, but rather a bunker system of Nazi German construction dedicated to the production of maintenance of World War II era Messerschmitt ME-262 fighters. Exploration via robotic endoscope reveals that the bunker system has internal dimensions of approximately 2 km by 4 km, with the long axis parallel to the main entrance X portal. While the exploration is by no means complete, SCP-108 is believed to, be, to contain hundreds of airframes under construction on its assembly lines, as well as three completed aircraft. There is also a large quantity of human remains in the complex, particularly concentrated around the entry-exit portal, with the corpses of Nazi officials, military personnel, Hitler youth, and civilians, possibly Ukrainian slave workers, in an advanced state of decay. Evidence of a firefight near the entry-exit portal supports the hypothesis that the German military personnel were swarmed by civilians and were killed in the ensuing struggle. Some, some corpses show sign of cannibalism. I did not see that coming. Nazi knows, yeah, Nazi knows apparently. Good God, imagine what might what happens when, when this woman sneezes. Robotic robotic endoscopic exploration continues. Ah, worth it. A high discharge LED lighting assembled piecemeal using the ship in a bottle technique has been deployed. Endoscopic examination of the interior of 108 reveals a large hangar door area with a kind of double airlock with blast doors large enough to admit two fully assembled flight fighters. A production line exists which would allow damaged fighters and deliveries to enter on one side of the hangar door and finished fighters on the other to exit on the other side. Turn the endoscope head 180 degrees reveals that the open doorway as an area of total blackness with two nostril shaped penetration in it. One nostril shape penetration is connected to whichever nostril is emitting the endoscope, and the other is connected to the interior of a human nasal ca cavity. DNA testing sh reveals the nasal cavity belongs to the subject. The black area is impenetrable and absorbs all wavelength of light the endoscope can carry. The black area is elastic and yielding when probed. Skeptic mate has a community room called the Parable of Stan the Parable of Stanbert. Wow. Apparently, the portal system is a unique three-way arrangement. If the outside world, <coughs> oh, Talk about noses and then that happens. Sorry, had to eject some Messerschmitts. Thank you. Just seen one, two, three O's on my um, one, almost 116 less of SCPs. Nice. Oh, God. If the outside world is designated A, the interior of the ME262 factory is, is B, and the subject's nasal capacity is C, then the traffic is as follows. Anything, including gassing light, going from A end up in B. Items going from B end up in C. Items going from C end up in A. Presumably in 1944, it was intended that C and A were to be the interior and exterior of a double hangar at Templeoff based on the architecture of the hangar doors. 
Addendum 108 stroke 1. Subject claims that she was trained to perform the human blockhead magic trick in preparation for being a clown at a children's birthday party. After hammering a 4 cm long galvanized iron nail into her navel cavity, she lost her grip on the end and dropped it inside her nose. Immediately she noticed a god-awful musty stench and experienced nausea and disorientation. Blowing her nose had no discernible effect and left no residue on tissues. She was able to breathe normally through her nose and after about 3 days subject got used to the got used to the hell's arsehole smell. <laughs> what the fuck? And performed at the children's party to the delight of her nephew. Approximately a week later, after ignoring numerous complaints about the smell of her breath, subject was diagnosed with pneumonia and placed on a course of Roxanne Roxothromycin. Pneumonia responded to antibiotics, but recurred a week later. Her general practitioner also noted that nasal examination with an otoscope showed simple blackness, rather than the inside of a nose. After admission to hospital with chronic pneumonia, examination with a one, one meter fiber optic endoscope allowed the endoscope to be threaded in almost the full meter. The attending ENT noted that he appeared to be seeing a Nazi eagle badge through the endoscope. Specialist examination notes were kept in a digital patient management system and intercepted by the foundation in a routine redacted sweep. The subject was recovered without incident by Task Force Epsilon 9, disguised as high-risk warrant team officers in a pre-dawn raid of July of 19 redacted. By the end of uh, the cleanup operation, the GP, ENT, 11 hospital personnel and two civilians were terminated. The subject was examined by foundation staff and provided her with an air filtration unit which could be passed through her nostrils piecemeal and assembled like a ship in a bottle. Filtration fire... Uh, finally, filling must be removed on a regular basis when it gets expended, roughly once a week, and the subject is essentially inhaling the atmosphere of a formerly sealed Nazi mass war grave. Although initially hostile towards the Foundation, the subject has responded well to enhanced psychological conditioning protocols and now accepts her situation. A plan has been proposed in line with the backing up of all critical Foundation data at Site-62 in SCP-108. Data could be written onto micro SD cards or similar compact and non-volatile media and inserted into the subject's nostrils, provided some way to house the subject in a safe location is assured in the event of an XK cast scenario. Research continues to find a um, way to move the entrance in the dimensional portal from the subject's nostrils to another location and to discover the physical location of the bunker to determine if alternate access is possible. The original galvanized iron nail has yet to be found. What the fuck was that, Nia? What the actual fuck was that? <laughs> what the fuck? So yeah, Nazi nose. Yeah, Nazi nose. Fucking hell. Who knows what, how that's going to end up. Next we have one, two, three, zero. A hero is born. I recognize this. I think. I recognize, you know, the, you know, the sound of it. So, yeah, that's the next. That's what we're doing now. Thank you to Jack for the suggestion of this one. And... Let's update this. 230 and next SCP <clears throat> is going to be 049 stroke J. And at this rate, we'll actually be opening up for more. Not many more though, I think. I'd say probably about three more, maybe. Do them in batches of three and see how long um uh, we go along with them. So get me Windows back at the Relation and monitoring of data. Um, item number SCP-1230. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures, this bit is struck out. SCP-1230 is to be kept in a secure storage lo locker at Site-12. Access requires minimum clearance 2 with authorization and supervision by clearance 3 research and security staff respectively. Supervising personnel are not to view 1230's contents. Personnel accessing 1230 are required to submit written accounts of dreams experienced within 48 hours of access. That ends the struck out part. See addendum 1230 stroke A. So the actual containment procedure 
1230 has been relocated to a secure storage locker behind the desk of Site-12's main library. Access is available to Clearance 2 personnel deemed to be in satisfactory psychological condition by Site Psychiatrist staff. Personnel accessing 1230 must submit written accounts of their dreams within 48 hours of access and submit to follow-up psychological examination. Description. 1230 is an unlabeled green hardcover book with no apparent exceptional qualities. When 1230 is opened, it displays the phrase, A hero is born on the first page viewed, while all other pages, pages will be blank, resetting once the book is closed. There, this has had no obvious effect at first, but upon falling asleep, the reader will dream of a fantasy world where they are the protagonist of a troubled land. Dreamers are completely aware and all senses work just as well as when awake. Research... Results vary depending on the imagination of the reader and are mostly attuned to fantasies of adventure that the reader would enjoy. In the mind of the reader, these dreams have been documented to last anywhere from 45 seconds, see experiment 1230 stroke 3, to 200 years, see experiment 1230 stroke 5. But in reality, the reader will never be asleep longer than they would normally. Upon awaking, the reader is able to remember every aspect of their dream in detail. In SCP-1230 induced dreams, there is always a character called the bookkeeper referred to as 1230 stroke 1, appearing as a bearded man in a green cloak who claims to be the personification of 1230 himself. 1230 stroke 1 has been reported to be very amicable and helpful towards dreamers. It is stated that it enjoys creating these fantasy scapes and always tries to shape them in such a way that the dreamer garners the most entertainment out of it. It has expressed sorrow when the dream comes to an end and asks the dreamer to please visit again soon. Discovery. In a small bookcase located data expunged, the shopkeeper had no recollection of owing um, this, only on this unlabeled book, but attempted to sell a story to local newspapers about a magical dream book. The foundation was able to dispel the story as a hoax, and 1230 was confiscated. That's quite fair. That's quite fair. Okay, so, experiment 1230 stroke 01. Dr. Redacted, in an attempt to test its effective range, opened 1230 and boarded a flight to his hometown of Redacted, where he spent the night at the hotel. Upon his return, um, the doctor reported that 12301, so, sorry, stroke 1 appeared in his dreams and explained that once you read A Hero is Born, the dream imme is immediately implanted into your subconscious, after which 1230 1 is able to manipulate it remotely. The doctor expresses appreciation for 1230 stroke 1's cooperation. Experiment 1230-02. A camera was set up above SCP-1230 and, using a mechanical arm, the book was opened. All pages were revealed to be blank. It seemed 1230 is only effective when opened by beings that are able to have dreams. 1230-1 explained to a subsequent dreamer that it is actually only to able to affect beings with an imagination and that most creatures such as animals would not be affected. You know, SCP, not gonna lie. Nightmares, clowns, and car crash. Oh, sorry to hear that, DJ. Um, Experiment 1230-03. stroke One D-class was instructed to open the book and, after much reassurance that his experiences would only be dreams, ordered to immediately find a way to kill himself in the dream. The subject was asleep for merely 45 seconds before he woke with a start in a nervous sweat. He reported being at the summit of a volcano called the Ashen Spire on a quest for Caladius, the Blessed Blade. When asked how the subject knew the names, he stated, It's like I knew them all along. He apparently leapt into the volcano and felt an intense heat before awakening. D-Class requested permission to give it another go. The request was denied. Experiment 1230-04 stroke one D-class was instructed to open the book and attempt to non-fatally injure himself in his dream. After six hours, the D-class awoke and reported that he was also able to feel the numbed sort of pain where it, was, um, where it was never so intense as to be unbearable. He also reported meeting an elderly cloaked man who asked him why he was harming himself but thanked him for not immediately killing himself like that other, other rude fellow. Experiment 1230-05 stroke Professor... Redacted filed a request for access to 1230 and was quickly permitted, given his level 4 clearance. Staff members recalled that professor, uh, the professor was almost visibly shaking with excitement, and some reported that prof the professor was an avid fan of tabletop and role-playing games. Oh, I see where this is going. Surveillance shows that the professor opened the book, read the phrase, sat down behind the desk, and promptly fell asleep. Staff members were alarmed when the professor did not awake after 15 hours and alerted security. 
The on-site medical staff were able to confirm that the professor was still alive and in good health. After approximately 24 hours since falling asleep, the professor began to move, reported to have slowly raised his head and looked around the room, appearing deeply confused. Security entered the room and ensured he was alright, to which he replied, Where am I? He was sent to medical, where staff explained where and who he was. Several minutes later, prof the professor appeared to have regained his memory and excused himself to the restroom. When 15 minutes passed and he had not exited, a nurse entered to find he'd hung himself with his belt. A scribbled message on the wall revealed his last words, I can't go back to this. Another doctor went to ask um, 1230 stroke 1 what had happened, but upon opening 1230, all its pages were soaking wet with the same message on every page. I'm so sorry, I never intended for this to happen. I just want to make people happy. Repeatedly, over and over. 1230 remained in this state for three weeks, and its desk had to be wiped clean, wiped dry bi-weekly. In an attempt to communicate, um, the same doctor placed a sticky note inside 1230 with a statement, I'd like to talk to you if that's all right. The next morning... Um, the doctor filed a report about the dream he had concerning SCP-1230-1. Uh, report being 1230-14. Upon falling asleep last night, I dreamt I was in a dark void. There was a street lamp, and underneath it was SCP-1230-1, sitting in a puddle. His cloak was visibly soaked, and he was sobbing profusely. I remember our conversation. Doctor, bookkeeper? Is that you? My god, man, where are we? Bookkeeper, I couldn't think of anything to make for a landscape. Bookkeeper, what happened that day? Why did the professor kill himself? We have to know your side of the story. He had such an active imagination. I was able to create a vast and beautiful universe for him. It was obvious that he wanted a life like that for so long. He conquered foul beasts and rescued princesses. He built kingdoms and even raised a family. But he never wanted to leave. He delved so far into his fantasy world that I soon realised he preferred his dream over the real world. I reminded him this was all merely an illusion, but he wouldn't listen to me. He stated that if he ever was ever forced to leave, he would immediately end his life. I tried to keep him happy for as long as I could. Bookkeeper, how long was the dream from his point of view? 200 years, Doctor. I did my best, but I could only hold on to him for 200 years. As sweet as dreams may be, eventually we all have to wake up. I woke almost immediately after. I can't believe he spent 200 years in his dream. I'm astounded by his foolishness, but it's such a shame to have lost a brilliant mind to his own delusions. Shortly after the report was filed, surveillance showed um, the doctor slipping another small paper into SCP-1230. A few days later, 1230 began showing it um, its usual, a hero is born, greeting once again. When asked what the note said, the doctor declined to give detailed comment, simply stating that he just gave it some friendly advice. Addendum 1230-A during initial testing, 1230-1 asked daydreaming personnel if it could be relocated to an area with many books, preferably fiction, so it could link of even better ways to construct its fantasy scapes. After numerous experiments were performed to ensure that 1230 posed no threat, the request was accepted and 1230 had been relocated to Site-12's library. Wow. That was lovely. That was really lovely. Okay, last one in the queue for the moment. This one comes, thank you to Nia. Right in the fields. Domain stroke J, SCP. You know what, whilst I'm, I'm going to throw open um, SCP um, requests again, so and I will accept three more, and then um, I'll close them again. So, requests are now open again. The first three that get in will be added to the queue, and then after that, I will hit. I'm okay, Jack. They hit hard. Yep. Very, it's very, it's very similar to um, uh, the uh, the dra the paper dragons one. Um, okay, Nia submitted SCP-01. It's very short. Okay. I don't believe I've. No, nope, have not seen that one before. Good. Right, um, there's the J1s. There's 049 stroke J. 049 stroke J called the, the Plague Fellow. The Plague Fellow, what the fuck? Oh no. Oh no, I'm going to have to do the Plague Doctor voice again, aren't I? Fuck. Ah.
Well, there's, there's three. So... Um, where is my next SCP redeem? There it is. So pause that. So we've got um, that followed by SCP-035, which I don't think we've got yet. No, we have not got 035. And then SCP-8. It's supposed to be, oh, it's supposed to be 8 equal equals D. Oh, for fuck's sake, it's a penis. What the fuck? It's a dick. The third, the third thing is going to be a dick. Well, that well, we might have, we might be ending on a dick joke. Fitting, really. Okay, let's update that to the next SCP being um, 011. We may well be ending on a dick joke today. Right. Okay. So. It's a little warning you, I don't know anything about it, just picked a random one. Oh, right. It's a little dicky as an SCP. I don't know what a little dicky is. All right. Item number 049 stroke J. Level 3 confidential. Containment class Euclid. Disruption class VLAM. Risk class Caution. Special containment procedures. SCP 049 stroke J is contained at Strike through site 19, strike through strike site 101, strike through site 17, strike through site 81, strike through site 13. Special restricted high security top secret MK ultra area region landmass 101.5 WFML near Richmond VA. 049 stroke J is permitted to leave its holding cell only under supervision of two. During the development of 049 stroke J's containment procedure, while the two guards discussed whether. Two might be more approachable than that for using documentation. O4 and Hasey climbed out a window and descended a fire escape. Guards armed with AR-15 rifles and stun batons. Due to olfactory concerns for staff assigned to O4 9 stroke J, the entity is no longer allowed to remove its mask. Low quality rapper is hilarious. Never heard of him. There's a there's a drawing of a medieval plague dot here in the medieval style, and it actually says that's the thing. SCP-049 stroke J revealing revealing very bird face. Description. 049 stroke J is a humanoid entity wearing the, the period appropriate garb of a medieval plague doctor. Further analysis of 049 stroke J has revealed that under, that under its robe, the entity is composed mostly of moss, wads of tissue, and other smaller plague doctor masks. It is generally compliant with foundation stuff, but will somehow lie and occasionally sweat profusely for no reason whatsoever. During 049 stroke J's time in foundation custody, it is continually claimed to be a powerful magical doctor wizard, capable of curing that which ails mankind. To date, it has been able to, unable to cure literally anything, and typically only exacerbates conditions considerably. While this alone would not be enough to the foundation to hold 049 stroke J indefinitely as an anomalous entity, it has also proven capable of somehow always evading capture and escape from foundation sites after its true lack of capabilities are revealed. Because of this, and because of staff's unwavering curiosity as to whether it has any of these self game magical healing abilities, it describes 049 stroke J to be housed and treated as an anomalous entity. Addendum 049 stroke J slash 1 interview. And the interview is the last part of it. Begin log. Dr. Baker. Hello, SCP-049 straight J. Welcome to... I am a doctor! Uh, yes, I'm aware. We're just doing this as a... I have the cure! Yes, well, we'll get to that. First off, can you tell me your name? Yes, hmm, quite. Very well. I have the cure, good sir. Indubitably, yes, I am a doctor. What? Bring me to the patient. I will heal them. Gestures with pointed doctor's dick. Jesus, what what the fuck were you, what were you doing with that? I am the cure. What in the world are you? Oh, I get it. You're sort of a moron, aren't you? No, good sir. I am most effective. I mean, my cure. I am the cure. Very effective. The most. Because I am a doctor. Right. We were going to look into that. Let's, uh... Do researchers wheel in a patient on the table. So this patient... 
Ah, has the pestilence. Yes. Mmm, I can smell it. Has a sore throat. We wonder if you know of any cures to fix ailment. Yes, of course. I'm a doctor after all. Subject begins to dig around their doctor bag for some time. Need any help over there? No, I, it's not the cure. I am the cure. Ah, yes, this will do the trick. That is a shoe. Yes. That will heal this person. It is the cure. All right, go ahead. SCP-049 proceeds to gesture dramatically over the patient before violently beating the patient's throat with a shoe. Oh, fuck, what are you doing? How's that supposed to help? The SCP shrieks incoherently. After a moment, the entity stops. The patient lies mutated and dead on the tabletop. What the fuck was that? Patient is healed! What? No, she's not. You just crushed her throat with a shoe. No patient is very well now. Yes, I am the cure. Look all this blood. Moral atrocities aside, this is going to take hours to clean up. You just killed a person. No, they are cured. Yes, watch. Grabs the corner of the patient's mouth and begins to move it while speaking out of the corner of his own. Hello, yes, I am the patient. Good sir. And I am cured. Most effective. Thank you, doctor. You did a good job. You are the best doctor. <laughs> Now look here, I see your hand down there. I know that isn't the patient talking. What is this supposed to be? Uh... Oh look, more pestilence over there! Turns look. What? Oh, for fuck's sake, he's gone again. God damn it! Post into the video, he logs show SCP-049 stroke J making a brisk escape through a side door. Additional footage gathered from nearby town shows 049 stroke J stopping at a hardware store to pick up a pointier wooden doctor stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, more peasants over there. Where? Oh, for fuck's sake, he literally gone again. God damn it. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. Wow. Wow. Oh god, next we've got up SCP-001, oh, sorry, 011, as courtesy of Nia, thank you very much. What the fuck? What the fuck is even? 035 is the next one. What the fuck? What the fuck even was any of that? Throat hurts, but worth it. Worth it for that. Jesus. Can we just can we just go back? Hey, my joke, SC, please. Yeah. Um, 011, so that's series one. Um, this one is Sentient Civil War Memorial Statue. Best 49 can't breathe. Item number SCP 011 Object Class Safe. Special containment procedures. Item 011 and the area surrounding it are to be cleaned once every day. For safety purposes, cleaning should start at least 30 minutes after sundown. Cleaning should always be performed by at least two personnel, who are also advised to note anything unusual about the item or the debris cleaned up. In a situation where the item cannot be cleaned for more than two days, local residents must be contacted and instructed not to approach the item. Containment procedures nullified to 2004. As the doctor will come help you. Description. 011 is a Civil War Memorial statue located in Wood Woodstock, Vermont. The statue is the image of a young male soldier holding a musket at his side and is carved out of granite quarried within the area. Occasionally, 011 has been observed lifting its musket to the sky to fire at birds which attempt to land or defecate on it. Reports detail that its movements produce soft grinding sounds but do not cause any structural failure. Oddly, the gunfire is very similar to that of a standard firearm, despite observations that the item only loads granite bullets and granite powder into the musket, which is also unharmed by the firing. In spite of its efforts, some fecal matter does manage to strike 011, and it has reportedly become distressed when it has large amounts of feces on it, on some rare occasions even firing at humans. Addendum. Those assigned to maintain 011 are to see document 011 stroke 1 for instructions. Document 011 stroke 1, maintenance brief. Document archive 2004, accessible to personnel with security clearance 2 stroke 011 or higher. Can you play in the blame poor bastard? This is just the SCP version of Shale from Dragon Age Origins. It's literally what it is. In fact, revision. Ooh. 
Oh, I don't know. When when was this actually? History. There we are. History. When was it initially uploaded? Two thousand December two thousand and eight. Oh. 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 I've got to check. I've got to check this out now. Oh. So, Dragon Age Origins was released almost a year after this SCP was written. I think the um, the writers of Bioware might have actually read this SCP and got an inspiration for the character. This. It's basically it's a golem who you find deactivated in a um, in a town in uh, one of the DLC areas, and when you activate the golem, she expresses that she absolutely hates pigeons because they keep shitting on her. So her favorite thing is to go and squish pigeons, and when she can't find pigeons, she'll go and squish people instead. And she's also the best party member you can get because she's a fucking tank. So yeah, I'm very certain that um that they read this and then got ideas. <coughs> Go for it, Torian. Uh, <clears throat> it's just common way to write living statues. Yeah, but it's it's got so much of the same sort of things about it. Additional information. OO1's seeming sentience has increased since the first report of activity in 1995. As of 2004, the item's containment procedures have been dropped, but it remains under constant observation. Recorded below are landmark events in, in its activity. 3-12-1995. Woodstock residents reports the statue's eyes moving. First sight activity. 9-30-1995. Statue shoots musket for the very first time. 10-9-1995. Statue begins shooting birds from the sky. Uh, 125 1996. Excuse me. Registration as SCP 011. Containment procedures begin. 414 1997. 011 observed moving casually and joke and looking around. 53 2000. After caretaker redacted, jokingly shouts, Good shot! to 011. The item replies, Thank you! in a reportedly very human voice. First speech from the statue. 1022 2001 011 has conversation with caretaker redacted to redacted 2001 shooting of birds stops 26 2002 at the imploring of redacted 011 steps down from its pedestal 2003 to 2004 011 reaches a human level of self awareness 11 10 2004 containment procedures dropped custody of 011 transferred to redacted 5-17-2005. Redacted reports that 011 is romantically attracted to her. 8-29-2006. Most recent psych test reports an IQ of 133. What? Wow, the caretaker's definitely getting some stone dick. <clears throat> I mean, it's always going to be hard, at least. Who could blame her? Fuck. It's getting smarter. Yep. Might become a problem at some point. At some point. <clears throat> but for now, it's just happily, you know, dicking this woman down. Oh. Oh. Q, your work is giving us twenty dollars of food deliveries. Thanks for um, E three. We'll send it to me then. Oh, send me pizza. Do it. 
I'm kidding. You you use that to um, treat yourself and Jace. You burned it. Um, okay, so SCP-035. This one's submitted by DJ. Thank you very much. And I have actually read this one. This is not that I've read. I've gone and read it in my own time. This is a. Um, this is essentially. Oh, Christ, what was that? Look what you've done, Tori. You've got a dick on my screen now. Um. Yeah. So, um, I've I've watched through um Markiplier's um playing of SCP Containment Breach from pretty much from when it very first released up until a somewhat recent-ish build. And when I say recent-ish, I do mean back in the, uh, the late 2000s. Um, and he came across SCP-035 and he had no idea what it was. And so what I did as some of the SCPs that he came across, I went and I looked up. Some of them I read, others I didn't. Worst case scenario, you could just dunk it in cement and accept the face and throw it back to the pigeons. Also true. No is yours. Give the pizza. Give. Give pizza. Give pizza. Now. Give pizza to dragon. And all that has accomplished has made me really, really want a fucking pizza. Bollocks. Bollocks. It's fine. I can... Get myself a pizza next Friday. It's fine. It's fine. Fine. <clears throat> right. Item number SCP 035. Object class Cater. Special containment procedure. I, I will bite off your hands. That's some weird French word. Back on mobile so you can start dinner. For fuck's sake, everyone's eating. I'm just sitting here getting hungry and also mildly creeped out by these SCPs. Um, special containment procedures. 035 is to be kept within a hermetically sealed glass case, no fewer than 10 centimeters or 4 inches thick. This case is to be contained within a steel, iron and lead shielded room at all times. Doors are to be triple locked at all times, with the exception of allowing personnel in or out. No fewer than two armed guards are to be posted at any time. Guards must remain outside at all times and are not allowed within the containment room under any circumstances. A trained psychologist is to, rem is to remain on site at all times. Research personnel are not to touch SCP-035 at any time. 035 must be moved to a new sealed case every two weeks. The previous case must be disposed of via SCP-101, which is... the bag of holding. <clears throat> As it shows no adverse reactions to 035's corruption, anyone who comes into contact with 035 when it's possession... So it's got a picture depicting this thing of, you know, the mask sat in the case. It just changed the picture as I was reading. Shortly after I said the word corruption. I'm mildly freaked out. <laughs> Anyone who comes into contact with 035 when it's possession of a host will is to be given an immediate psychological evaluation. Move away from that. Description. 035 appears to be a white porcelain comedy mask, although at times it will change to tragedy. In these events, at all existing visual records, such as photographs, video footage, even illustrations of 035 automatically change to reflect its new appearance. A highly corrosive and degenerative viscous fluid constantly seeps from the eye and mouth holes of 035. Anything coming into contact with this substance slows de slowly decays over a period of time, depending on the material, until it's decayed completely into a pool of the original contaminant. Glass seems to react the slowest to the effects of the item, hence the construction choice of its immediate container. Living organisms that come into contact with the substance react much the same way, with no chance of recovery. Origin of the liquid is unknown. Liquid is only visible from the front and does, does not emerge or even visible from the other side. 
Subjects within 1.5 to 2 meters, 5 to 6 feet of O35 or in visual contact with it experience a strong urge to put it on. When O35 is placed on the face of an individual, an alternate brainwave pattern from O35 overlaps that of the original host, effectively snuffing it out and causing brain death to the subject. Subject then claims to be the consciousness contained within O35. The bodies of possessed subjects decay at a highly accelerated rate, eventually becoming little more than mummified corpses. Nevertheless, O35 has demonstrated the ability to remain in cognitive control of a body experiencing severe structural damage, even if the subject's body literally decays to the point where motion is not mechanically possible. No effect is found to be had when placed in the on the face of an animal. Conversations with O35 have proven to be informative. Researchers have learned various details about other SCP objects and history in general, as O35 claims to have been at many monumentous events. O35 displays a highly intelligent, charismatic personality, being both amenable and flattering to all those who speak with it. O35 has scored in the 99th percentile on all intelligence and aptitude tests administered to it, and it appears to have, uh, and appears to have a photographic memory. However, psychological analysis has discovered that O35 to possess a highly manipulative nature, capable of forcing sudden and profound changes to interview a psychological state. O35 has proven to be highly sadistic, prompting some to commit suicide and transform transforming others to near mindless servants with linguistic persuasion alone. O35 has stated that it's an intimate knowledge of the workings of the human mind and implied that it could change anyone's views if given enough time. Additional, O35 was found in a sealed crypt in an abandoned house in Venice in 18 redacted. Addendum O35-1 O35 has been found to be able to possess anything that has a humanoid shape, including mannequins, corpses, and statues. O35 has been able to motivate all into movement in removing the need to expose life subjects to O35. Still, anything it possesses inevitably decays into motionlessness. O35, Addendum O35-02 O35 has facilitated an escape attempt, convincing several of the research staff to aid it in its bid for freedom. Insurrection failed. All staff have been in contact with O35 have been terminated, and mandatory psychic evalu psychiatric, psych uh, psychiatric evaluations have been implemented for all personnel coming in contact with O35. Addendum O35-3. It has been determined that O35 is capable of telepathy, whether or not it possesses a host, even penetrating to the subconscious of others, and using the knowledge it finds to its advantage. Extreme caution is advised when choosing subjects to converse with O35. Addendum O35-4. O35 has expressed an interest in other SCPs, most notably 4715 and 682. Dr. Redacted has expressed worry that it should that should um, O35 bond with either, their regenerative qualities would negate its corruption and give it a permanent host. Addendum 03... Um Addendum 035 stroke 5. After several more escape attempts and after reviewing 035's incident report, High Command has ordered that it be permanently sealed within facility and prohibited it from being allowed any more hosts. Several personnel have protested against this, with some even erupting into violence. As a direct result, all personnel that have come into contact with O35 have been terminated. Going forward, all personnel to, that deal with, o, with O35 are to be rotated frequently, and contact is to be limited even to its dormant state at, to as little as possible. Addendum 035 stroke 6. Personnel within 10 meters of O35 have recently reported feeling unease, stating they can hear unintelligible whispering. Several others have suffered from severe migraines. Object has been monitored, but there is no change in its dormant behavior, and no sounds have been recorded. Why? Thing is, 682 is no stranger to assault in its mind. I doubt O35 would have a fun time. This is true. Um... The motion to reinstate O35's host privileges have been brought up once more, if only on a temporary basis to discover these new changes in the object's behaviour. Denied. Addendum 035-7. The walls of O35's containment cell have suddenly begun secreting a black substance. Tests on the substance have revealed it to be human blood, although highly contaminated with several foreign and unknown agents. Substance is corrosive, having a pH of 4.5, and prolonged exposure to the walls have proven to be detrimental to their structural integrity. More notably, it seems to be forming patterns on the walls. Several segments seem to be paragraphs in various languages, including Latin, Italian, Greek, and Sanskrit. Translation is pending. Other segments appear to be diagrams depicting ritualistic sacrifice and mutilation, often for the arcane benefit of the person committing them. Several staff members have been shocked to note that all of the sacrifices bear an uncanny resemblance to various personnel and their loved ones, often in conflicting positions.
Researchers, while in the room examining these newly formed patterns, have complained of hearing loud whispering and high-pitched unnerving laughter at irregular intervals. Personnel in the section working daily near, in, near and around 035's containment unit have suffered catastrophic morale damage with an all-time high in suicide rates in staff in that area, whether or not they have ever had contact with 035. The only change in 035's dormant behaviour regarding its contains um, glass case. Degradation of the case has increased to a high degree, enough so that the glass will occasionally shatter, causing a wide disperse of 035's contaminant. This occurs quite often at the most inopportune times, so far as it resulting in six casualties and three fatalities of both research and cleanup staff. Addendum 035 stroke 8. In light of the mass suicide homicide of the members of the research team tasked with translating the passages guard from 035's containment cell, the morale damage in the area and general loss of staff dealing with 035 to either death or insanity, it has been decided to code to the inner and outer walls of its containment cell with SCP-148, which has proved well in um, the containment of, one th of 132, in order to hopefully block out the high levels of negativity being entered by 035. Addendum 035 stroke 9. The use of SCP-148 has worked well, causing morale and suicide rates to return to near pre-035 rates. However, the material appears to facilitate the negativity within the cell, causing a veritable greenhouse effect inside. Personnel inside the cell have stated that they feel a heavy sense of dread, fear, anger, and general depression, as well as hearing constant, nearly inaudible whispering upon immediate entry. A prolonged stay causes severe migraines, suicidal tendencies, heavy hemorrhaging of blood vessels around the eyes and inside the mouth and nose, general hostility to others and for the whispering to increase to almost deafening volumes intersected by a constant mocking laughter exposure of more than three hours and invariably results thanks fox food has been provided i know what i'm going to do after this well after the next scb i mean food right that's right there right there it's not it's not pizza but it's food um Exposure of more than three hours inevitably results in the subject fa falling into a deep psychosis and attempting to harm either themselves or others. Most spoke in Latin or Greek, despite the fact that several did not previously know how to speak said languages beforehand. The presence of blood in both word and diagram formations has increased disproportionately. The walls becoming cluttered and the formations begin to overlap each other. The substance has proven to be both difficult to clean and even more corrosive than was originally recorded, with a pH of roughly 2.4. General estimation gives the current walls a life of two months before they will need replacement. It is becoming gradually more and more difficult to contain O35 and the debate to reinstate its host privileges has once again come up. Denied. Addendum O35 Tet Stroke 10. The walls, ceiling, and floor of O35's containment cells have now been completely saturated in blood. All personnel entering and guarding the area must wear full hazmat protection suits. Constantly, constant cleaning efforts are being instated. Addendum 035 stroke 11. The magnitude, intensity, and recurrence of the phenomena that incur within O35's containment cell have increased to an alarming degree. The cell door has been known to become locked to its own accord while personnel are inside and able to be opened for a period of time. Appendages form out of the larger puddles of blood and often attempt to grab or harm personnel near them. Blurry apparitions have started appearing to staff, electronic devices no longer work inside the cell, and the light cannot be turned on, though there is no physical reason why it does not work, forcing those entering to use non-electric based light sources. Cleaning measures are also having no discernible effect on the cell, and the walls are degrading at a very high rate, forcing them to be replaced within a week at best, although the blood makes it nearly impossible to pro properly achieve this. O35 may have to be moved to a new cell entirely, with the old one sealed off and disengaged from the rest of the facility. The mask is having a tantrum, essentially. But yeah, that's a... That's a freaking creepy one, that. Ugh, oh, God. Right, okay, let's go to the joke. Go for the joke one for the very last SCP. Partly because time, and partly because I'm fucking hungry and want to eat. Although, I have to say, we have gotten quite a fair number of SCPs. It is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the ninth SCP um, read today, which I think might be a record. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight. No, it's not a record. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, ten. Ten is the current record. However, we have not had this many SCPs since the first and second streams. Oh, the interview logs. No, there's not. Not like a C, no. Um, no, what? Let's do to five to the equal sign. Would help if I was actually clicked into the right thing. Find equals equals. Oh, there we are. Monster containment for my monumental dong. 
Thanks for this one, um, Torian. Thank you so much for, for helping me end my SCP stream on a dick joke. I mean, I, I usually start by saying, you know, fairly loudly the word penis, so, you know, it's fitting. Adult content. This article contains adult content that, uh, that may not be suitable for all readers. If you're above the age of 18 and wish to read said content, then you must click here to you said content. Oh. Just... What? Thanks for stretch my stretch the enormous dong. I do already. Yeah, you know, ju just ask certain members of my chat. I'll take this stretch. Oh God! Oh, it's been a while since I could do that. Oh, I can. I can already feel why I haven't done that. Why I'm still re um, recovering from surgery? That would have hurt. I was right to um, not do that. One screen share this one. Let's do it a little bit. Yeah. This is very visual. Oh my good god, where do all those hydrations come from? Thank you to E, DJ, Torian, and Nia for the hydrations. Man, you make me really, really thirsty. Right, okay. I will try. I will try to do a screen share of this. And Torin got the cans. I, I, I wheel the bait. I, I wheel bait off your hands. Oh, that's that's that is that's quote number ten sixty now. Ooh, existing wheel. There we go. He's chopping onions and taters. Taters. So, if you can all see this, um, fine, because this is how we're going to go about it. Hey, get out of here. This document contains critical information regarding SCP-8... I'm just going to call it SCP Dick Joke. An anomaly that can edit the frickin' world, and as far as I can see, you don't look like the kind of person that's supposed to see us. Now scram. Okay, wise guy, you think you can just walk right past a one like that's nothing? We'll get a load of this bad boy. My son maybe there's a mimetic kill agent, I'm so proud. Wait, shoot, that was the was that the right fractal? Oh hell, that didn't stop you. And try to get us through this. Pass for protection. Why is Abraham Lincoln not like going to the theatre? You don't even need to type anything in. Well, shit. Okay, I guess you got me. Item number. SCP Dick Joke. Ipon Object Class. Ticonderoga. Special Containment Procedures. Dick Joke's phallus is to remain fully erect at all times. Should Dick Joke's phallus ever show signs of diminishing size, MTF Pen 15, the exclusive club, is to be deployed to Washington, D.C., disguised as a group of tourists, and arouse D Dick Joke's phallus as much as required to return it to full erection. Oh my good god. The SCP is the Washington Monument, but it's someone's actual dick. These dead laws, what was that? Oh my god. The foundation is to both disseminate and deny rumors that the Washington Monument is the penis of a large subterranean entity. Foundation personnel are not to engage in similar theories regarding the dick joke and are instead encouraged to increase dissemination of further WMPTs or Washington Monument penis theories. 
its biggest dickus, according to Nia. Should dick jokes fallacy ever become flaccid, Foundation personnel are encouraged to spend what remaining time they have left with their families and loved ones before an XK class end of the world scenario occurs. Description Dick joke is a large sentient subterranean entity standing approximately 6 kilometers tall and weighing approximately 47 million kilograms. Dick joke's physical structure is aesthetically and dexterously identical to marble and granite, though it is capable of softening and hardening in response to physical stimulation. Dick joke is otherwise physically identical to a standard human, with the exception of an oddly shaped phallus. Dick joke is currently lying prone beneath the National Mall in Washington, D.C., with its erect phallus protruding from the earth. When solid or liquid matter make contact with dick joke, the subject's anomalous effect occurs, converting the matter entirely into the same material composing dick joke's body. Dick joke then reconstitutes any matter affected in this way into its body, adjusting its size and proportions accordingly to the amount of matter incorporated. The exception to this is when a subject touches dick joke's phallus, wherein dick joke will become notably aroused. And its anomalous effects will cease. While aroused, Dick Joke will enter a pseudo-inanimate state, only capable of moaning the words, Oh fuck, that's good, on occasion. See attached document, History of Earthquakes in Washington, D.C. for reference. Oh my fuck. Should Dick Joke's anomalous effects come into effect while on Earth, the entire planet will be incorporated into its mass within 24 hours. Addendum Dick Joke 01. Below is a transcript, transcription from head researcher Richard Jacques during an orientation regarding the maintenance and research of Dick Joke. Transcription begins. Jacques, recording this? It's on? Does that, mean, does that light mean it's on? Oh good, let's get started, shall we? Researcher Jack taps on his laptop and opens up a presentation which displays on a large monitor next to him. He then steps away from the laptop and pulls out a small remote before returning to face the audience. Welcome. I know I recognize a few faces from previous work, but I figure I should introduce myself anyway. My name is Richard Jack, and from what I'm about to tell you is very, very important. For one reason or another, the Department of Others trusts you all implicitly, and you've been tasked with handling one of our most dangerous and potentially apocalyptic objects in containment. Researcher Jack clicks the button on remote, bringing up an above-ground image of the National Mall. Buried beneath Washington, D.C.'s National Mall is a massive, strong stone creature capable of assimilating solid matter into its body, and if it were to breach containment, the world would come to an end in a matter of hours. Researcher Jacques clicks the remote and changes the image to include an overlay of a humanoid figure over the previous image. Normally, with an anomaly like this in a place so public, containing it effectively would be near impossible. However, we found a way to both quell a veil breach and contain its anomalous effects. Researcher Jack smiles and pauses for a dramatic effect. We keep it horny. A snort is heard from the audience. Yes, it's true. For whatever reason, this thing's anomalous effects stopped working when it was aroused. So your job is to keep it as horny as possible so it doesn't come out, out of whatever state it's in and, you know, end the world. And for those of you that has a gigantism kink, we know you're here. Yes, you can touch it yourself. Nervous laughter from the audience. Anyway. Richard Jack clicks the remote twice before displaying an image of the Washington Monument. As you can see, judging by the shape of um, Dick Joke's penis, you've all figured out how we were able to contain the veil breach as well. The Foundation and Mr. Tide's witnesses, a cover story was put in place, and we made it a national monument. Josie, hello and welcome, just as we're talking about Dick Jokes. Gigantic ones, but no less. Unknown Voice 1. Fucking knew it. Of course, we had to fudge a few parts in the history books to make sure people wouldn't even think to theorise that the thing is a giant penis. For example, the reason it was built wasn't exactly to memorialise a dead president. Richard, uh, Richard, uh, researcher Jack clicks his remote again, displaying the words, thank you for your time. The Washington Monument, as you can see here, is a part of the cover story of the Foundation came up with in order to do everything we could to hide Dick Joke's true nature. Even though it was built in the 1920s, all history books record it being a pre-Civil War project to make it look like we didn't build a penis to hide the fact that it is a real penis propped up in the National Mall. Wait, hold on. You just said that the Washington Monument was a penis. Are there two Washington Monuments? Uh, where did I say that? When you showed us a picture of the Washington Monument and told us it was um, Dick Joke's penis. Researcher Jack turns up an eyebrow and turns up the display screen. He laughs. Oh, whoops, sorry, skipped an image, I guess. 
We should have Jack Clinton's remote twice. Yeah, sorry, the real, pe the real penis is um, the Lincoln Memorial. Imagine I'm surprised when the cover story pretty much made itself. We should research Jack Clams in his hand together. Anyway, let's get they're going for a couple of field tests to get you all acquainted. Some of the fine deals can really only be explained when you see the real thing. Science. Wait, so we're jacking Lincoln off? Oh, no, no, not really. The giant rock monster's penis just looks like Lincoln. But I get the confusion. Any more questions? Several hands shoot up. In transcription. Oh, my God. Thank you for the hydration reminder, Ray. And chat's gotten horny as a result. We talked about the horny, now we are actually experiencing the horny. I mean, honestly, Josie, I'd assumed that um, you would have been um, looking after Zarya um, with um, her coming down with COVID. So I wholly, wholly understand you having not been here. Wait, so is Lincoln made up? Did they make Lincoln's whole life up just to explain the weirdly shaped penis? Possibly. A picture of the dick of the dick joke censored for nudity. You're looking after good. I'm glad. It was a prepping stream later today. The best way to end, yeah. God, I thought the strip club was there. I can't believe the dildo was president. I heard that, but my Firefox window hit it. Jesus. Better than any options, yeah. Wasn't even called Richard. Or was he? Doo -doo -doo. It wasn't. I thought we were going to eat it. There we go. Gotta love using the same um, overlay, but for different reasons and with different positioning. Yeah, so that is, that is going to be the end of the SCP stream right there. That is. Wow. Also, put uh, pop a note to myself. Um, um, post to SC Red SCP channel. Uh, uh, it'd be really late. Don't worry about it, Josie. Like, like I said, I was uh, I was um, assuming that you were going to be looking after Zarya. So, no worries at all on that. You feel awful. If you feel awful for missing the streams, then don't. Honestly, I fully understand why. There's, you know, you're having to look after someone who's got COVID and, you know, it's delaying other um, real, real world things. So, completely understand that. If you feel awful, then I hope you feel better soon. You know, non, you know, non for that. Um, let me just change that. Yeah, um, next stream for me is going to be tomorrow at 4 p.m. BST, which will be near Automata, unless I don't know, something happens, like I get um, an offer for a um, for a, uh, indie key. You feel awful for being like this. Do not like honestly, Josie. Do not worry. I wholly understand why you're late and why you know, you haven't been here um, lately. It's completely, completely understandable. Um, I will leave you all with knowledge that um, currently on GOG for the next 72 hours, um, well, actually, it's, it's, it's 67 hours at this point in time, um, a game from the 90s called Flashback um, is free.
to keep. Um, Flashback is a old 90s game, very much in the um, genre of side-scrolling platformer. Um, it's the, it's a game that inspires stuff like Abe's Odyssey. Um, and was inspired by itself by Prince of Persia, the original one. You make up for the new Redemption story and we'll love a few of them. What time are you planning on streaming, Josie? What time tonight are you planning on streaming? Because I will come along and um, bug you. <laughs> bug. Um, I also need to think of a title for this. Two PM EST. So in about twenty minutes. Dickus Dickus. I was I was thinking I was thinking because you know you know combining some of the other ones. Um, red red right red right hands big red right hands dick joke or something like that. I'm just mid trip and it's pressing. Oh, so yeah, so everyone go and check out um, Josie's stream in about 20 minutes. Um, but from me, that will be all for today, and I will see you all hopefully tomorrow, um, at 4 p.m. BST for um, I already said it near Automata, might be closer to 3 p.m. though, so. Um, when you when you when you do go live, um, feel free to post it in the server, and we'll come and watch. Hoping you do it soon, though. No problem at all. All you understand that you know real life is changeable at the moment. The moon house for biggest sticker. That's a good one as well. Yeah, I think I'll go for that one. The moon house for biggest stickers. Awesome. So we'll see you there then, Josie. Um, as for everyone else, I will see you tomorrow for the, for the Near Automata stream. But until then, thank you very much for coming along and for your support. It's all greatly appreciated in whatever way you've chosen to show it. Um, special shout out goes to Zeta for the raid. Thank you very much for that. That was towards the beginning whilst we were you know, still in weirdness. Um, until then, though, um, have yourselves a good rest of your evening, a good day, a good night. A good morning or good afternoon. Well, the time is for you. So then, though, stay safe, stay amazing. See you later. Bye.